Hello, 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 coders. Hello, coding students, um, already credentialed coders. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the first AMCI YouTube course for advanced coders. So um, just to let you know, I'm Mrs. J. I am the curriculum director for AMCI and I am accompanied by my right arm. She's one of them, Mrs. Tracy. And you know what, Mrs. Tracy is coming to you live from California. How are you, Mrs. Tracy? Hi, Mrs. J. I'm great, Mrs. J. Thank you for asking, how are you doing? I'm doing well. You know what? We've got this hurricane that's supposed to be coming or, you know, so I'm doing well. How well, are you? please, please be safe. <laughs> and anyone else who is in the path of hurricane, I think it's Dorian, please, please be safe. Um, I know it's, uh, I've been watching on the news. So yes, I'm all, over, all the way over here on the West Coast. I am in California. So good morning from California. I know some of you join, might be joining us um, central time zone you might be on the eastern time zone so um anyways wherever you are you were you might be in another country so wherever you are good morning good afternoon and or good evening i don't know <laughs> anyways <Yeah>. I, <laughs> I want to welcome everyone um i as mrs j said i'm one of the lead instructors i'm miss tracy one of the lead instructors here at amci and i actually i have to t tell you a little bit about my journey to AMCI, I started in 2016 with another YT course. It wasn't for advanced coders, actually a more beginner course. And um, that was uh, launched by Mrs. J on Red Nose Day. So I was actually on the other side, just as you all are today. Um, so it's really special to me to be here um, with Mrs. J on this side as an instructor, um, being able to give back to what you know I got when I was a student. So um, I was really appreciative of what Mrs. J did for me, what AMCI did for me on my coding journey um, when I, you know, to my CPC exam. And um, it just really opened a whole new world for me as far as understanding of guidelines and whatnot. So um, I just want to say that I am honored to be here today and um, I am really excited to get started. So, um, Oh, go ahead, I would like to say something. I don't think she should just move along so fast. Not so fast, Mrs. Tracy. Mrs. Tracy did partake in the YouTube course, the free one that we launched. And you know what, coders? She got magnum cum laude. Yes, she did. So I just want to say it's our honor to have Mrs. Tracy on our team. And she's the leader of our instructional team. And Mrs. Tracy, I'm going to hand it over to you so you can take care of the business. Oh, well, thank you so much, Mrs. J. But I got to say this, this course definitely contributed to that. Um, and I am forever grateful. So thank you, Mrs. J. And yes, um, so again, coders, just to let you know, this is um, the YT course for advanced coders. So um, uh, I want to let you know the class rules. Um, we will keep on saying that this is an advanced class and there is an expectation of preparation prior to attending this class. Um, so if you are a student, you've sh you should have viewed the lectures and completed the homework or quizzes prior to class. If you are not an AMCI student, you should at least have a complete understanding of the chapters we will be discussing. Our pace will be accelerated. Um, if you find yourself having um, several unanswered questions or you're just feeling a little bit overwhelmed, you may not be ready for this class. Um, again, it is su suggested to review all the CPT chapters prior to this class. Um, if you are currently in a comprehensive course, this course is definitely for you. So this can definitely supplement um, what your the instruction that you are getting at another course. You may not feel like you may feel like you need a little bit extra. This is definitely for you. Um, if you are a new coder, this course may not be for you. However, um, just let us know. Reach out to us and communicate with us. And we we have we want to make sure that we are um, catering to your needs. We do have something for you as well if you are just starting out. Um, feel free to watch the playbacks at any time. Only students in attendance will receive the free homework that we will be given out so make sure you're in attendance and um, again you should have some experience with the CPT guidelines 
And um, again, I will say have your CPT manual with you because we will be going over guidelines extensively today as well as um, getting some coding practice. And yes, class will move at a faster pace than usual. Thank you, Mrs. Tracy. All right, so let's go over the goals for today. Today, we will review the guidelines for integumentary coding, this, that section in your CPT manual. That's the first section or the 10,000 series. So hopefully you have your CPT manuals. Number two, we're going to provide scenarios to further clarify the more complex guidelines. So that should help you for those that are tactile learners that need to do in order to learn. Also, we are going to provide CPT documentation tips. And finally, we're going to demonstrate the importance of forensic reading. At AMCI, we always talk about forensic reading, learning to read the documentation very, very precisely. And that is going to be your ticket to coding with very few errors. All right, again, the class will move at a faster pace than usual. And if you want to know, why does she repeat herself? Well, I do know that some of you will be coming in not everyone doesn't come in on time and some of you are going to say that come in later are going to say wow this is so hard so we are letting everyone know as often as we can that class will move at a faster pace and maybe you can respond to some of the students in the chat whenever they say hey this is so hard you might want to tell them that this is an advanced class all right, here's our course outline number one, and that is today we're going to discuss integumentary coding. Number two, musculoskeletal system, that's our week two. Week three, respiratory system. Week four, cardiovascular. Week five, digestive system. Week six, we will discuss urinary male-female coding. Week seven, nervous eye-ear. Week eight, radiology, anesthesia. Week nine, pathology. And week 10, medicine. Yes, we do have a comprehensive um, course instruction lined up for you. However, we will not cover evaluation and management or ICD-10 CM or PCS. We just don't have the time to address evaluation and management or E&M coding. If you need E&M, contact our customer service department. We can help you. We have an E&M course. Also, ICD-10, CM, and PCS, just way too much time. We don't have enough time to address them, and these two, two subjects do require a little more attention and a little more time. Don't forget, class will move at a faster pace than usual. Now, before we get down to it, Let's get our fingers typing. I want to get you accustomed to, to typing in the chat. I want you to be able to locate the chat and communicate with us. We have a poll question that I'd like you to answer. Are you ready? Okay. How confident are you with coding integumentary? Um, how confident are you with integumentary system guidelines, integumentary system coding guidelines. How confident are you? Are you very confident? Are you somewhat confident? Are you barely confident or other? I'll repeat. How confident are you coding um, integumentary system guidelines? Are you very confident, somewhat confident, or barely confident, or other go ahead type in the chat type away now here's a note if you have a question or if you type in that chat box keep in mind your instructor the instructor that's speaking cannot see your question however i can see what you see on the screen right now so however several AMCI instructors who are not speaking are standing by to answer your questions and you'll be able to identify the AMCI instructor as their name should read 
AMCI instructor, Mrs. J, or AMCI instructor, Ms. Amber, or AMCI instructor, Mrs. Tracy. So if you want, um, if you have questions, go ahead, type them in the chat. The speaker will not be able to answer you. However, all AMCI instructors will. So that does not mean that I will not be answering your chat questions. You better believe I will when I'm not speaking. All right. So let's do our due diligence. We got to tell you about copyright. CPT is copyright of the 2019 American Medical Association. All rights are reserved. Fee schedules, relative value units, conversion factors, and or related components are not assigned by the AMA and they are not a part of CPT. And AMA is not recommending their use. The AMA does not directly or indirectly practice medicine. Okay, look at my, my screen is getting a little ahead of me. <laughs> or nor do they dispense medical services. The AMA assumes no liability for data contained or not contained herein. CPC is a registered trademark of the American Academy of Professional Coders or AAPC. AAPC content found within this presentation is copyright of AAPC. Keyword concept, FTR, Chun, AMCI Fab 7, Flip Tap are all trademarks of AMCI. All right, so my notations. Let's let's just kind of review my notation symbols. You gotta, um, we gotta do this because you may see them. You're gonna be looking at my um, CPT, my electronic CPT, and you gotta know what these symbols mean. So you see this little squiggly thing? This means that items are bundled. So right here, this little squiggly means that the items are bundled in a particular code. When you see this plus sign, this means that you're to code in addition to or code separately, you'll see the plus sign. This X sign, this is a general do not, like do not code. This um, slash with the zero with the slash going through, this is another do not code, but it's more specific. And I typically use this zero or this do not code when it specifies what you don't do, like do not use modifier 62. This last one, this do not code parenthetical guideline right here. This um, asterisk is a do not code when you have a guideline, a parenthetical guideline. You got a do not within a parenthetical guideline, these asterisks you will see. Now we'll talk about parenthetical guidelines very shortly. And these, finally, these eyeballs, this means that there are extensive guidelines that you need to take a look at. Now you can find these notations in next to guidelines or you can find them in your code series. Sometimes I do put them there, but I want you to know their meaning so that you can kind of understand what I'm you know, what I'm trying to convey. All right, we've got some general surgery guidelines. All right, so we've been talking about some guidelines. We've got some general surgery guidelines, and these guidelines apply to all surgical procedures within the surgical section. The surgical section begins at integumentary, what we're going to discuss today, all the way through the nervous system, okay? So the first thing that you need to know is the CPT package. Do you know what a CPT package is? Go ahead and type it in the chat. Hopefully you do. And if you don't know what a CPT package is, that means that a CPT code, a CPT surgical or surgery code is not, just does not consist of the surgery. There are other items bundled into it. Yeah, so when someone has a particular surgery, there are one, two, three, four, five, six items bundled into it, such as 
the evaluation and management services subsequent to the decision for surgery on the day before and or the day of surgery. And that includes your history and physical. So if a person has a, the doctor decided, look at this, sorry about that. So if the doctor decides that surgery is going to take place today and this doctor um, performs an evaluation and management service, guess what? You are going to bundle that, it's bundled in that code, all right? So that e &M service, the day before and the day of surgery is bundled. Also, your local anesthesia is bundled. Also, your post-operative care is bundled. Your The writing of orders are bundled. The evaluating the patient in post-anesthesia recovery, that's bundled. And your post-operative follow-up care is bundled. All of these items are bundled in each and every surgical code in the um, surgery section. Now we talked about follow-up care for diagnostic procedures. Um, follow-up care for diagnostic procedures like endoscopies, arthroscopies, injection procedures for radiography. This includes only that care related to recovery from the diagnostic procedure itself. In other words, there's really no follow-up treatment for these diagnostic um, procedures um, for diagnostic procedures. Now, um, let's talk about follow-up care for therapeutic surgical procedures. Now, there are follow-up care in surgical for these therapeutic procedures. However, you have to be mindful of the follow-up days. So just know that they do exist supplied materials. If you have a, a procedure, some procedures do code additionally for supplied materials. Generally, those, those um, more extensive procedures don't charge additionally for supplied materials, but procedures that are in the doctor's office could. So if you have, if the doctor is going to be um, coding for the supplies or a surgical tray, you would use code 99070. Now, if you are reporting more than one procedure or service, such as a procedure performed on the same day, same session, or during a post-operative period, you subject subject to the surgical package, you might want to consult Appendix A for definitions. Now, this separate procedure, this is the last thing that I want to talk to you about. Separate procedures are key. When you're coding, if you understand separate procedure, you have an advantage, especially if you're taking the exam. A separate procedure is a procedure that's generally coded by itself. It is not coded with other procedures. However, it can be. Now, if it's coded with another procedure that is related to it, well, put it this way, if it's not, as long as it's not related to another procedure, then you can code it. If it is related or integral or integral to another procedure, like in the same body area, you will bundle it. So if you know that you're not supposed to code these separate procedures, then it will give you an advantage. If you know that you're supposed to code it, it will give you an advantage. And we're going to have some examples throughout this 10 week. But I just want to tell you that separate procedure and knowing how to use it properly will give you an advantage. And when you can or do code separate procedures with other procedures, let's say it's not related, you will use modifier 59. You have to. So that's another hint. All right. So let's still talk about these guidelines. You have to trust your guidelines. First, you got to know them or know how to locate them. And then Second, you've got to trust them. So we've got three types of guidelines that we use when we are um, coding in CPT. You've got parenthetical guidelines. 
Parenthetical guidelines are guidelines found within the parentheses, as you can see right on your screen. Anytime you see a parenthetical guideline, those are priority. Second, you have code series guidelines. And the code series are guidelines are right before, I'm gonna pause my screen because it's just going on its own. And Mrs. Tracy, if you can go ahead and stop, I guess uncheck my slideshow, that should help me a lot. And thank you in advance. All right, so second, you have code series guidelines or chapter guidelines, and they are right before the codes. And you'll see them like under bl this blue bold, like right here, it says debridement. There are guidelines right up underneath that. And then third, you'll see general coding guidelines found on the green pa pages as we've just seen. So, with that said, I want to tell you that these guidelines have a hierarchy. Your parenthetical guidelines have the highest level of priority, and they take precedence over your code series guidelines, and they take precedence over your surgery guidelines. So first parenthetical guidelines, then um, your code series guidelines, then your chapter guidelines. These are the hierarchy right here. Now, if there's no guideline at all, your keywords will rule. So we're going to teach you how to do your keywords. We have a um, practice at AMCI. It's called Keyword Concept, where the students are instructed how to select keywords. We're not going to go into that. We just don't have a whole lot of time. But I can tell you that you need to highlight all procedures and all diagnoses. And that is going to be the extent of our keywords here. All right, so let's get going. We've got the integumentary section. First up, let's take a look at the table of contents. First, you have your general um, surgery procedures. That's 1004 through 10021. Follow, followed by the integumentary system, 10030 through 19499. Yes, there is a general surgery section. And then, and that pretty much consists of biopsies. And we're going to talk about that too. But integumentary system coding is categorized with skin subcutaneous accessory structure procedures. And within that, you'll see introduction and removal, incision and drainage, debridement, pairing or cutting, biopsies, removal of skin tags, shaving of epidermal or dermal lesions, excision of benign lesions, and excision of malignant lesions. Then you'll move on to your nail section, then your pilonidal cysts, introduction, then we'll move to repairs, and these are like sutures, repair your simple repair, intermediate complex, and then we have a repair um, referred to as adjacent tissue transfer. Here's another repair, it's called skin replacement surgery. Then within that skin replacement surgery, you've got surgical prep, you have autographs, allografts, um, skin substitute grafts. Then we move on to flaps. That's a form of repair. Then we have other flaps and grafts and other procedures. And next we have pressure ulcers and burns. And these all are your repair procedures. Next, you have destruction. Destruction of benign or pre-malignant lesions. You have destruction of malignant or le malignant lesions, then Mohs micrographic surg surgery, followed by other procedures. And then finally, we'll end things off with breasts. You've got incisions, excisions, introduction, mastectomy procedures, repair and or reconstruction and other procedures. All right, coders, now let's get started. When we code for um, integumentary, it is important that you understand the structure of the skin. And I found this image 
in your CPT manual. So right in that table of contents, you'll, you'll find the structure of skin. And I just want to review that you need to know the following. You need to know that at the very top of the skin, this is the epi, the epidermis. Right underneath that, epidermis is what you see. This is what you can see when you look down at your hand, that's your epidermis. Now, just beneath the epidermis, this is the true skin. Yes, and we are gonna call this the dermis, yes. And you know what, coders? This is the anatomy of skin, your epidermis and your dermis. However, when you're coding in the integumentary system, you need to go a little further. Yes, the subcutaneous tissue is also something you need to be aware of. This is the level that's beneath the dermis and you can see it right here, it's yellow. In fact, it's fat, but you'll need to know that it's there. And underneath that is fascia. Fascia is like encasing, it wraps around the muscle. All right, so the fascia comes right before the muscle. And if you think about sausage and that encasing or that casing around the sausage that holds it together, that's just like fascia. It wraps around the muscle to hold the muscle together. And after that, boom, that's the, far, that's the farthest you can go. So for integumentary system, even though we're talking about skin, these, these, um, this anatomy, you'll need to know when you're coding for integumentary because they are related. Now, integumentary also, as you can see, if you were looking in that table of contents, it involves the structure of a nail. Yes. So the nail is made up of a few things. And let's just go and talk about the nail bed, the nail bed, the nail plate, and the matrix. It's important that you know um, what they are. So here's your nail bed. It lies right underneath the nail plate. There's your nail plate. And then your nail matrix is right here. This is where all the nerves and the nerve endings, that's where that is. Okay, so you've got your lymph nodes, your blood vessels and nerves right here at the nail matrix. Now, because there aren't too many guidelines that are really associated with um, coding nails, let's go ahead and let's take a look at page 86 of your CPT manual. This is the section when you're coding for nail procedures. So let's take a look at my chun. Oh, by the way, Chun is an AMCI annotation technique, and we use it to help us select the most accurate code. We use it to annotate our book, and it's, it's used for coding accuracy. All right, so if you've got code 11719, this is the code for trimming of non-dystrophic nails any no number. So if you're going into the, let's say the podiatrist and you're just going there to have your nails trimmed, like let's say they're not, they don't have fungus, there's nothing wrong with them. They're pretty much normal nails. You're gonna use code 11719, just a routine trimming. And some people might say, well, why would anyone do that? You'd be surprised. You've got people who are diabetic, who don't, um, who cannot, trim their nails because they can't have um, trauma to their extremities, like their, their toenails or their fingernails, they would probably have the, um, the doctor carried out. And the difference between 99719 and 99720, this is nail debridement. There's a difference between debridement and trimming. You know, debridement could could mean removal, but it's a lot more extensive than just trimming or clipping. And finally, avulsion 11730, this is total removal of the nail or the nail plate, complete or partial. So if you make the same notations, this will help you a lot when you're coding. 
If you're coming for a nail avulsion, boom, right there on site, you see avulsion, you're going to grab that code. And remember, if you're taking the CPC or the CCS exam, um, these are multiple choice exams and you can grab the correct code on site. It will give you a quick, quick way to eliminate the wrong answers. All right, so we're finished with coding um, nail procedures. There are, there are no guidelines that I know of. So let's move on and let's talk about a procedure that has some guidelines that you need to be aware of. Debridement procedures. When you are coding for debridement, well, first let me tell you what debridement is. It's, it's um, the intent of debridement is to remove all necrotic and or foreign material from a wound. And um, it, the main goal is to leave the viable tissue intact so that healing can take place. Healing cannot take place if it's full of dead tissue or Foreign, foreign body. And if, the, if this procedure is not taking place, you could have more complications that can, that can jeopardize the survival of your limb or body area. So debridement is very important. So with that said, let's talk about how we code debridement procedures. There are three types of debridement procedures when you're coding. Yes, there are. The first is code series 11000 through 11008. This is debridement procedures on genitalia, perineum and or abdominal wall or necrotic and affected skin. Yes. The second is code series 11010 through 11012. This is debridement procedures for open fractures and open dislocations. And the third type of debridements that we'll be coding for, 11042 through 11047. These are all other debridement procedures. In fact, this is the general debridement code series. Now, the first two are specific. You're only to use the first two when you have the circumstance. So it's straightforward and you know when you should know when to use it. Now, if you don't have the first two circumstance, then you have to use the general debridement codes. So let's take a look at the debridement guideline right here on your left. And these actually pertain to the general, the coding of the general debridement codes because A and B are so specific that the code language tells you how to code it. So when you're coding general debridement procedures, like let's say someone has a um, wound, they got in a fight and they were fighting outside and they got a open wound and it was dirty. Well, this is how it's going to be coded. The guideline tells you that wound debridements code series 11042 through 11047 are reported by the depth of tissue that is removed and by the surface area of the wound. So that means how far down they debride. They can debride all the way down to the bone. Yes. The guidelines also tell you that um, what I just said, that you're, they're going to code the deepest level of the tissue removed. And when you have multiple wounds, you are to add the surface area of those wounds are, that are of the same depth, but do not combine the, the wounds of different depths. So you're not going to combine a sub, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Oh, I'm saying subsequent, a um, subcutaneous wound with a bone wound. You're not, they have to be of the same depth, all right? And when you have different wounds of different depths, then you're gonna have to use modifier 59. And if you have dermabrasions that you're gonna be coding for, see 15780 through 15783. For nail debridements, you don't code it from this section. You'll code it at 11720 through 11721, as we've just seen. For burns, you'll code um, 1600 through 16. 
0.35. And for pressure ulcers, you're going to use code 19520 through 15999. So don't forget, coders, go ahead and document these guidelines that I've just told you. You're going to um, code these according to the depth of tissue removed and by the surface area. So in other words, you're going to code the deepest level tissue removed. If you have multiple debridements, you're going to add the debridements of the same depth and do not combine the different depths, but you code each separately and you're going to use modifier 59. And if you want some tips on um, Chun, I will tell you this. If I were you, this first section, 11000, this is debridement of extensive eczematous or infected skin. That is very, very specific. I would put exactly what it is right next to it. You're going to use this code for eczematous and infected skin. And if you move down into the next family, this area is for necrotic skin of the genitalia, the perineum, and the abdominal wall. This is very specific, 1004 through 11008. Very specific to, the, excuse me, 11006. That's very specific to the body area. And 11008, this is removal of prosthetic material or mesh. So uh, from the abdominal or infection. So that's very specific. Now, if you're looking at the others, 11010 through 110, oh, look at that. Okay, so 11010 through 11011, this is debridement um, from the site of an open fracture or open dislocation. And 11011, this is your subcutaneous muscle and um, fascia level. 11012, that's your subcutaneous muscle, fascia, and bone. So it just tells you the, the, the level. And then finally, 11042 through 11047, this is all other debridements. So if that works for you, but let's take a look at my um, sections. For the all other debridement section, if I were you, I would put what the, the deepest level that's being debrided. So if we know, well, first, you know, this is the eczematous and affected skin, 11000 through 11001, and then 11004, we know this is in the necrotic skin, the genitalia, the perineum, the abdominal wall, all the way down to 11006, and then you know we know that 11010 through 12, this is the site of the open fracture or dislocation. These general debridement codes right below it, I would put the deepest level of tissue at 114, Two zero. That's your sub. Um, why do I keep saying subsequent? Oh, I apologize. This is your subcutaneous tissue. One one zero four three. This is your muscle and your fascia. And one one zero four four. This is bone. If I were you, I would notate as such in my CPT manual to give you an advantage. And coders, I think you're ready. Ready for what, huh? You're ready to solve this scenario. I'll go ahead and read it, and then you solve it. So what we do at AMCI, we read the answers first, and we want you to, to get in the habit of doing that too, because when you're looking at the answers first, it will help you approach your scenario. It will give you an advantage and help you with your time when you're taking your exams. All right, A, 11044 times two, 11042, 11005, B, 11044, 11042 with a 59 modifier, 11005 with a 59 modifier, C, 11044 times 2, 11042, and D, 11005, 11044. Four wounds were debrided on the same day. 
a four square skin centimeter heel ulcer, a 10 square centimeter ischial ulcer or ischial ulcer were divided to the level of the bone and a 16 square centimeter necrotizing dehiscid abdominal wound and a 10 square centimeter thigh wound were debrided at the subcutaneous tissue level. Which of the following answers best describe this encounter? All right. Okay, coders, what say you? What is your answer? I'm gonna give you a minute and a half. What do you think, Mrs. Tracy? I think that sounds awesome, Mrs. J, and I will start the timer. Good awesome. luck, coders, your time begins now. Thank you. Okay, I think we gave them just a little more time than usual because we, you know, this is the first one. And so how did you do? I hope you did well. All right, so we've got our keywords. That's what we always do. So remember I said all of the diagnoses and all of the procedures should be highlighted and those are your keywords. We've got a four square centimeter heel ulcer, a 10 square centimeter ischial ulcer, and it was debrided down to the level of the bone. You've got 16 square centimeter necrotizing dehiscid abdominal wound and a 10 square centimeter thigh wound down, debride it down to the subcutaneous tissue level. So what I'd like to do is I like to get my bearings. I like to kind of do an inventory of what took place. So <clears throat> four square centimeter of the heel down to the bone, 10 square centimeter of the ischial down to the bone, 16 um, necrotized dehiscid abdominal, and that's down to the subcutaneous level. And we've got a subcutaneous thigh um, procedure. All right, so let's go ahead and let's pull up these codes. And if you document it properly, you should be able to see some things right away. So we'll go ahead and um, put our keywords and also let's go ahead and figure out what we're gonna do at the bottom. In fact, the guidelines told us some things. It says that when you have, um, when you're debriding down to the level, and if you have to make sure that when you have multiple, that those that are of the same area, not area, but the same type, same level, you, you know, put them together, you add them together. So our first code, 11044, this is debridement of the bone 
includes your epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous muscle and or fascia if performed, but we're really talking about the bone in A, B, and C are all coding for the bone. And we know that we have two bones that we're coding for. Two of the body areas were coded down to the bone level. And remember, you're supposed to add them. Look at that, 14. This is the amount. This is the total square centimeters that we need to code for. So we know that 11044 is your first um, is coding for the first 20 square centimeters. Now, some of you might say, well, how do you know you need to use this code 11044? Well, of course we looked it up, but these are gonna be coded under the general debridement section because we're not coding for any infection or we're not coding the perineum or genitalias. No, we're coding general body areas. We're not coding for an open fracture. No, we should not be coding from that section. And remember, we don't code from sections that we are not, um, that's not relevant. If it's not one of those two areas, we're coding from the general section. All right, so we know that we're gonna use 11044, but we also know that A is incorrect and so is C because we don't need two units of this code because this code is for the first 20 square centimeters and we are only needing a 14. The guideline tells us that we can add these two together. The total is 14, so there's no need to code, use 11044 twice. So let's go ahead and get rid of A and C. Next, Oh, and that leaves us with B, and that also leaves us with D. And we know that 11005 is a good code because this is the code for debridement of skin, subcutaneous tissue, muscle, fascia, or necrotizing soft tissue infection, external, excuse me, infection, abdominal wall with or without fascial closure. All right, we know that we've got a 16 square centimeter necrotizing dehiscent abdominal um, wound from down to the subcutaneous level. And we know this is a good code, but we got a little problem here. If you look at, so we're just gonna kind of just, just say, all right, this is a good code. Now we need to know if B is correct or D is correct. And if you look at D, D is coding for this abdominal wall procedure and coding for the bone. And what it fails to do is code for that thigh, that thigh um, debridement. So 11042, this is the code for debridement down to the subcutaneous tissue, the first 20 centimeters. And that's where you would code it from because this is coding for the thigh. And so therefore D is incorrect because it's missing the subcutaneous code. So we're gonna eliminate that and B is our answer. And remember, if you're coding multiple wounds of different levels, the guideline tells you that you need to use modifier 59, okay? And so that's why um, we appended modifier 59 to 11042 and 11005. So guess what? B is your answer. I hope you got it correct, coders. How did you do? All right, good deal. All right, so these are the guidelines for coding debridement. If I was moving too fast, make sure you can always watch the playback. If you just clearly didn't have any idea what I was talking about, you know what, coders, this might be a little more complex for you. So we'll talk about some, some other things that you can probably do to kind of um, become more familiar with this type of coding, excuse me, not this, with these guidelines, all right? All right, so the next subject is biopsies. In 2019, AMA, 
or CPT, did a total overhaul of the biopsy guidelines. So before we look at these guidelines, let's go ahead and talk about what a biopsy is. Well, a biopsy is an examination of tissue that was removed from a living body to discover whether or not there's diseases or illness, all right? So it is in, um, it is a procedure and the, and it's done for the purpose of diagnostic. Well, it's a diagnostic procedure to diagnose a condition. All right, are you ready for the guidelines? And if you're following along, these guidelines can be found on page 80. Okay, so, and look at this. These are all green. When you see green notation, and look at this, see this inverted triangle right here? That means that this is new language. Yeah, so not difficult, but new. All right, so the use of the biopsy codes 1110111023456 and 7 indicates that the procedure to obtain tissue solely for diagnostic pathology examinations was performed independently or it was unrelated or distinct from other procedures so that means you will not be using these codes with other um with when with other procedures if it was, how can I put it? If it's not solely for diagnostic purposes, for therapeutic purposes, you wouldn't use these codes, all right? So I do wanna point out, if you have um, biopsies performed on lesions or, excuse me, different lesions or different sites, you can report them separately, all right? So these biopsies are used these codes, these biopsy codes are for diagnostic purposes only. When you have um, certain surgical procedures in the integumentary section, such as excision, destruction, or shave removals, the removed tissue is often submitted for pathologic examination. And um, the components of these procedures and the this Obtaining of the tissue is not considered a separate biopsy procedure and it's not separately reported. So I think it's really important that you know whether or not it's diagnostic or therapeutic. Want to also point out that partial thickness biopsies are those that sample a portion of the thickness of skin or mucous membrane and do not penetrate below the dermis or lamina propria and full thickness biopsies penetrate into deep tissue, tissue deep into the dermis or lamina propria, into the subcutaneous or submucosal space, just so you know that. Now let's get to the good stuff. You've got three types of biopsies. Previously, we just had one type of biopsy that the codes would be used for and now we've got three. The first is a tangential biopsy. These are shaving, scooping, saucerization, or cure it. You've also got a punch biopsy, and this requires a punch tool to remove a full thickness cylindrical, cylind cylind circular portion of sample of the skin. And then you've got an incisional biopsy, and that uses that requires the use of a sharp blade, not a punch tool, but a sharp blade. So let me give you a look at this. Well, I'm not going to show you now, not at this moment. I want to show you some more guidelines here. So you've got some guidelines when you're coding all three. First of all, you got to know when you're coding for a tangential, when you're coding for a punch, and when you're coding for incisional. Often your documentation will say that's what you're coding for, but if it doesn't, I'm going to give you some tools to identify which type of biopsy it is. Now, when you've got multiple biopsy techniques performed during the same encounter, here is your guideline, and this guideline tells you that you've got to sequence them at in a, 
you got to sequence the most comprehensive or the most complex first. So that's pretty much it. And if you didn't know, your incisional biopsy is your most complex, followed by the punch, followed by the tangential. Okay? And that's what these guidelines tell you. And if you have an add-on code, it's up here. You code it up there. The guideline is right here on how to use the add-on codes. And this little chart right here is really nifty because it tells you how to sequence when you have multiple biopsies. If you've got two tangential biopsies, this is how you code. If you've got three punch, this is how you code it. If you've got incisional biopsies, this is how you code it, pretty much your codes and the add-on codes. And when you have multiple biopsies right here, you've got one incisional biopsy, one tangential, and one punch, this is how you code it, and so forth. So you've got some additional guidelines, parenthetical guidelines. You've got um, for the nail unit biopsy there, intranasal biopsy for lip, biopsy and for biopsy of the vestibule of mouth. There are your parenthetical guidelines and you can find these guidelines on pages 80 and 81. Now let's take a look at some more guidelines on page 82. You've got tongue biopsy, biopsy of the floor of the mouth, biopsy of the penis, biopsy of the vulva or the perineum, biopsy of the eyelid, including the skin margin, biopsy of the conjunctiva, ear, and then you've got your deleted codes. These were the old biopsy codes. And I believe that's it. And as you can take a look, all of the codes are new. So now let's just take a quick look at an example of an incisional biopsy. Basically when they're cutting using the sharp object, your punch biopsy, this is it. It's a circular biopsy. It, they punch it down and grab the tissue, bring it back up and send it to pathology. And then you've got your tangential. Um, it could shave off the actual lesion. And there you go. And this is the hierarchy. If you've got all three done in one encounter, your incisional will be the highest ranking then tangential, then of course, followed by punch. All right, our coders, are you ready? Mrs. Tracy, are you ready? We have a scenario. I am definitely ready, Mrs. J. All right, awesome. here, great discussion on those biopsies. All right, so here's our answers. We have A, 11102 times two, 11106, B, 11102, 11103, 11106, C, 11102, 11103, modifier 51, 11106, modifier 59, or D, 11106, 11102, modifier 59, 11103, modifier 59. A 55-year-old retired female with a history of skin cancer arrives to her dermatologist's office for biopsies of three suspicious lesions. The physician performed three separate biopsies on each of the lesions. A tangential biopsy of a 2.3 centimeter chest lesion was carried out first, followed by an incisional biopsy of a three centimeter lesion of the back, then a tangential biopsy of a two centimeter lesion of the neck was carried out. What procedure code uh, or codes best describe this encounter? And coders, I'm giving you a minute and a half and your time begins now.
Okay, I believe time is up. And if it isn't, my apologies. Let me just talk really slow. All right, coders. So the first thing that we do is we highlight our keywords. And remember, I said all diagnoses and all procedures. So history of skin cancer, three suspicious um, lesions, three separate biopsies, tangential, 2.3 centimeters on the chest, incisional, three centimeter lesion of the back, and tangential, another one, two centimeters of the neck was carried out. So you know I like to do that little inventory just so I'm sure of what I'm coding. I got a tangential, two centimeter chest, incisional, three centimeter of the back, and another tangential, two centimeter of the neck. Here are my keywords. I'm going to put my little inventory right here. I'm going to put my codes up. And you know what, coders? Look at this, 11106. This is the code for incisional biopsy of the skin. Example, like a wedge biopsy, including simple closure when performed. You know what? This is the most complex of the three. Remember, we said that these multiple biopsies should be coded with the most complex first. So if you remember those guidelines, guess what? You don't have to go through all of that, okay? You don't have to go, you, you are saving yourself time by having the guidelines down. Take a look at this, 11106, is the and D is the only answer that puts that code first. It's coding for it first, and the others just don't bother to do it. So we're not going to bother looking up or entertaining A, B, or C. All right, coders, how many of you found did the same thing? After all, you guys are all advanced coders, so therefore you have to start cutting out the fluff and moving on with the good stuff. All right, Mrs. Tracy, are you ready? I am ready, Mrs. J. Thank you so much for that wonderful discussion. And we're gonna move right along and we're gonna talk about skin tags. And um, you can follow along uh, on page 82 of your CPT, 2019 CPT manual. Um, so basically skin tags, when skin tags, when skin tags are removed, um, they are removed either by, usually by scissors or any sharp tool. Um, it could also be done by ligature strangulation, which is cutting off the blood supply, um, electrical, surgical, destructions another way, or a combination of these methods. Um, also, it can include chemical destru destruction or electrocautery, okay? And the one thing that you need to remember with um, skin tags is that, that they're all coded separately, okay? So if you look at the codes for skin tags, there's actually only two codes. You have 11200 and 11201, okay, as you see right here before you on the page. Um, so pay attention to the code language. 11200 there includes up to um, 15 lesions and that add-on code 11201 is for each additional 10 lesions or part thereof okay so that would be listed um, separately in addition to the primary procedure 11200 okay all right so um, I have a little example for you <laughs> um, so if we had 40 skin tags removed I'm just going to give you just a couple seconds just to look at this if you had 40 skin tags removed let me know what what do you think um, your codes would be here okay keeping in mind that that 11200 codes up to 15 lesions and then you're going to use the add-on code for each additional 10 lesions okay your keyword in this add-on code here is each okay meaning they all have to be coded separately that's your guideline that you need to um, uh, really, really hone in on here is that it says each, okay? All right, so 40 skin tags, what do you think? So 11200 is going to cover the first 15, correct? So that takes care of 15, but we have 40 there. So if we subtract that 15 from the 40, we have 25 remaining that we're going to have to cover, right? 
So we use this add-on code to cover the next 25. However, the add-on code only covers each additional 10 lesions. So we're gonna have to use that add-on code a few different times, okay? 11201 would cover the next 10, then we'd have to use it again to cover another 10 because we have to get to 25, so that's 20 there. And then we have to use it again because it says or part thereof, okay? So that next five needs to, we need to use 11201 again to cover the remaining five that are left, okay? So 11200 once, and then 11201 would need to be used three times to cover the 40 skin tags that were removed. And there is your answer, 11200, 11201 times three, okay? All right, how'd you do? <laughs> okay, so that's just that's just the only thing that you need to remember here. There's just the two codes for that, and um, and you have to code each separately. And that's it. So let's go ahead and talk about shaving of lesions. So shaving is defined as the removal by sharp transverse incision or horizontal slicing of an epidermal or a dermal lesion. Um, that so this would not extend beyond the dermis. Okay, remember your epidermis is that thin outer layer of the skin, um, and the dermis is that thick inner layer okay underneath um underneath the dermis or underneath the epidermis is is where your dermis lies um so shaving involves slicing to remove the lesion on the epidermis and the dermis without penetrating into that fatty tissue that mrs j showed you earlier in your diagram okay all right and um so you want to just uh pay attention to your your keywords here okay they will help you to identify whether or not to use these codes so your keywords would be shave slice shave and removal okay your um, guidelines are um, you need to know the location on the body and the size of the lesion that is being removed and um, you code separately okay and that's Oops, I think that is it. <laughs> All right, Mrs. J, All back right. to you. Hang tight, it takes me a little while to grab that screen. Okay, no problem. There you go, great job, Mrs. Tracy. All right, let's take a look and see. How are you doing? I can't see, but Mrs. Tracy probably can see how you're doing. All right, so we've learned about debridement. We've learned about shaving, shave removals. We learned about biopsies. We learned about shaving lesions. We learned now, we're learning now about excisions. And what is an excision? An excision is a full thickness through the dermis removal of a lesion. And as you can see this, they really did go through the dermis. Whew, you can see some fat too. But they removed this lesion. A, they've anesthetized it. B, they removed the lesion. And C, they sewed it up. So we've got some guidelines. All right, so for those of you that are writing down these guidelines, um, you may not get it all because we are moving at a faster pace. So just go ahead and look at the playback. The playback will be here for you. All right, and for those of you that have the TTT manual, you don't even have to write these down. We've documented them for you. All right, so don't work smarter, work harder. All right, so excision. When you are excising a benign lesion, You've got two different types of lesions that you're coding for. You've got benign lesions, you've got malignant lesions. Now we're gonna discuss benign, that means non-cancerous first. So when you excise the benign lesion and you're coding for them, this includes the simple closure. Simple closure is bundled in that, in that excision procedure. And in, like I said, excision is defined as full thickness through the dermal dermis and it it also is removal of that lesion and it includes the the margins and it includes like i said the non-layered closure so the simple closure is included 
Now, this section tells you how to measure the clinical diameter of a lesion, and that does include your margins. And I think we have an example that should show that, but if we don't, because I can't remember, you add the lesion plus the margins. You add the legions, lesion and the margins, and just know the margins are equal. So you can't have one margin, you always have two, and that, that's why you add the lesion, lesion and the margins. And if they give you one margin, you just multiply it by two. So lesion plus margin times two. Also, coding closures. Whenever you're closing up that wound, if it's a simple closure, it's bundled, but if it's intermediate or complex, you're gonna code that additionally, all right? And sometimes they have other, uh, other repair procedures, such as um, a reconstructive closure. You're gonna code that. That's in your skin graph section. Um, an ATT, well, if you got an ATT, you're not even gonna code that excision. You're just gonna only code the ATT, all right? And remember that excisions are bundled in ATT. Now, that's all for benign lesions. Now, coding for malignant lesions is very similar to coding benign lesions. So excisions of malignant lesions, of course, is coding for cancerous lesions. So if you have a scenario and it's a benign um, lesion that's being worked on, you're not going to use these malignant codes and vice versa. And the definitions are the same. Excision is defined as full thickness um, through the dermis removal of that lesion. And it also includes the simple closure of that wound. And they, um, and it tells you to report each malignant lesion excised separately and how to measure the clinical diameter of that lesion. That is the lesion plus the margin times two. Now closure of defects um, by intermediate or complex closure, you're gonna code them additionally. And just like the benign, if you have a um, reconstructive closure, you're gonna code it from the graft section for ATTs. You know what? You don't even code excisions. These um, excisions are bundled into the ATT, but if it's intermediate or complex, you're gonna um, code the intermediate or complex closure. All right, and when you have a situation where the Excision is a re-excision. That means that it is being recut, re-excised. Then you need to use modifier 58. So some of you might say, oh, that's a lot of guideline. It is, but once you get in the habit of reading it, you know. And if you have the TTT manual or you're in the AMCI course or you have the lecture series, we outline exactly how to code it. We just um, provide you with the guideline. We tell you to put the guideline right on the page where the codes are so you don't have to figure it out. It just tells you how to um, solve it. I wonder if we have a an example. Hmm, I'm not sure. But Mrs. Tracy, would you like to read this for me, please? Yes, I would, Mrs. J. Thank you. You're welcome. Here's our answers. We have A, 11644, 12052, modifier 51, C44.319, B, 11643, 12013, modifier 51, C44.319, C, 11444, 12052, modifier 51, D49.2, or D, 11443, 12013, modifier 51, D49.2. Procedure diagnosis, basal cell carcinoma, left chin. Procedure wide local excision of 3.0 centimeter with a 0.3 centimeter margin basal cell carcinoma of the left chin with a four centimeter closure. 
procedure, the patient's left chin was examined, the site of intended excision was marked out, the site was then prepped, the patient was then prepped and draped in the usual fashion. A 15-blade scalpel was then used to make an incision in the previously marked site. It was carried down to the subcuticular fat. The lesion was then sharply dissected off underlying tissue bed using a 15-blade scalpel. It was tagged for pathologic orientation. The hyphricator was used for hemostasis. The wound was then closed by advancing the tissue surrounding the lesion and closing in layers with a 3-0 vicryl for the deep layer, followed by a 5-0 proline for the skin. The skin closure was in a running subcuticular fashion. Steri strips were then applied. What are the procedure and diagnosis codes for this encounter? And you got a minute and a half and your time begins now. Good luck. All right, get your answers in. And Mrs. J, that's time. Awesome, thank you so much, Mrs. Tracy. All right, coders, what did you do? What did you get? All right, well, the first thing that we're gonna do is highlight our keywords. We're gonna highlight all diagnoses and all procedures. And you've got basal cell carcinoma, left chin, wide local excision, 3.0 centimeters with 0.3 centimeter margin basal cell carcinoma of the left chin with a four centimeter closure. All right, also incision. Yes, that is a procedure. Subcuticular fat, yes, sharply dissected closed layers. All right, coders, what say you? What answer did you get? Well, first thing that I notice is this is basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma means that this is cancer. So we know we will not be coding for benign. We're not going to use benign codes. And I want to just kind of give you a little hint on how to distinguish on site the difference between benign codes and malignant codes. Well, benign codes begin the code series with 114. When you see a 114, that's the code for benign. When you see 116, that's the code, that's the beginning of the malignant code. All right, so put it to your memory. This is something you probably should know. When you're coding excisions, your benign excisions are 114, your malignant 116. Got it? All right, so with that said, look at our codes at the bottom. Look at A, B, C, and D. We see C and D begin with 114. So that means these are representing benign 
um, lesions and no, we've got basal cell carcinoma. That is indeed cancer. So on site, we've eliminated C and D. Now, some of you might say, well, how, how can I learn to do that? You can do that through practice. Yes, so the more that you code these excision of lesions, the more you'll start recognizing these little tactics and these little hints, they will definitely, definitely help. Now, when we're coding, we have to remember the guidelines. The guidelines, if you have your TTT manual, you sh or you're an AMCI student, at the bottom of your page where these codes are, you should have written, is this a malignant or a benign lesion? You should also have written that you need to code each of these separate. You code these according to the body area, simple closures are bundled, and that is pretty much it. So we know, hmm, if we're looking at these repairs here, and I want you to look at them, you've got, they're all separate. And remember, we're coding for a repair, or are we? You've got a simple repair. And remember, we don't code simple repairs when we're coding excision of lesions. You've got your intermediate repair. We do code intermediate and we do code complex. And just like we were able to identify that benign lesion and distinguish it from the malignant lesion, we should, or you should, make it your business to distinguish your simple repair from your intermediate, from your complex. So if you look at the simple repair, it begins with in the low 12,000s, 1200, zero, zero, see? To 12021. Intermediate repairs begin at 12031. And your complex, why, that's in a whole different zip code, 13100. Zero, zero. So you know that anything within 12001, zero, zero, one, that's the low 12,000s through 12021. It's bundled, okay? All right, so now that we know that, let's revisit our um, scenario. And we know that this scenario is coding for the removal of that basal cell carcinoma, and it's also coding for layers, layers. And any more than one, this is more than one. So more than one is intermediate. And if you don't know the difference between it, I believe Mrs. Tracy is gonna give you some instruction on it. And if you need more after that, um, I definitely encourage you to go and check out our lecture series. All right, so on site, remember I said the low, the low 12,000s will be your um, simple closures. And the larger ones will be your intermediate. Yeah, so on site, we know that B is coding for a simple closure in the setting of an excision. And we will never see that because simple closures are bundled. Look at that. Coders, we were able to eliminate B, C, and D, and A is our answer. All right, how do you feel? How do you feel? I told you this was an advanced class, and so what we really wanna do is give you techniques on how to solve these scenarios more quickly. There is a presumption that you know some, some things, and a lot of you do know, a lot of you are certified, a lot of you are um, just testing for your CCS, and a lot of you have learned this in your courses. All right, so. Without further ado, I like to hand it over so we can have a discussion about repairs and closures with Mrs. Tracy. Okay, I love that trick, Mrs. J, the 114116. That was kind of like a game changer for me when I learned that. So, um, so I, I love it. It's it's especially when you're taking that exam, you're going to be able to eliminate some of those answers rather quickly when you know that. So thank you for passing on that knowledge. 
Okay, so yes, we are going to go ahead and talk about closures. And so in um, CPT, there are several different types of repairs. We have our um, repairs um, and closures. We have ATTs, grafts, uh, skin grafts. We have burns. We have flaps. Um, so we're going to turn our attention to closures, but we are going to cover a lot of the other ones as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and first talk about closures. Um, so with this, with our closures, the important thing that we need to know here is the type of closure we're dealing with. So we need to know, do we have a simple repair? Is it an intermediate repair or a complex repair? So it's just really important to pay attention to what the documentation is telling us. Um, if you have a simple repair that is superficial, some of your keywords for this is going to be, um, you know, layer. It's going to be singular, just layer, okay? Um, and if you have an intermediate repair, this um, requires more, it requires a layered closure, okay? So of one or more of the deeper levels. And um, some of your keywords to look for with your intermediate closures are gonna be layers, um, uh, plural, layered, um, or it could be a single layer with contamination. So if it says a layer, a one, once a layer closure with contamination, that would be bumped up to a intermediate, okay? So your keyword there would be single layer with contamination. Um, and then your complex, your complex, this is more than a layered closure, okay? So you'll see some things here. Um, it says more than a layered closure. We have scar revision. That would be a keyword to look for if, if you have a repair and it includes scar revision, um, debridement, traumatic lacerations or avulsions. It might say extensive undermining, um, stents or retention sutures. Those are all keywords to pay attention to that will bump this to a complex repair, okay? And um, it's also important to remember when you're coding um, all of these in the same setting, um, you have to make sure that you know your sequencing, okay? So your more, most complex goes first. That's something to really look for in your answers. If you have a simple repair that is um, coded before a more complex repair, we know that that's wrong because we always code our most complex procedures first, okay? So pay attention to sequencing order on that. Okay, and um, when multiple wounds are repaired, add together the lengths of those in the same classification. So if you have several repairs, um, complex repairs, you're going to add all of those up, okay? And um, so those would be bundled or those would be added together. And if you're dealing with more than one classification of wound, um, you would append a modifier 59. For example, if you have a simple repair and an intermediate repair, those are different classifications. You're going to append a modifier 59 for that, okay? And um, the complex repair, um, in, so involvement of nerves, blood vessels, and tendons report under the appropriate system, nervous, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal for repair of these structures. Um, the repair of these associated wounds is included in the primary procedure unless it qualifies as a complex repair. And in that case, we would append a modifier 59, okay? All righty. All right, and the last thing on this page, um, simple exploration of nerves, blood vessels, or tendons exposed in an open wound is also considered part of the essential treatment of the wound. It is not a separate procedure unless appreciable dissection is required, okay? So the simple exploration there is going to be um, bundled um, unless there is, like it says, appreciable di dissection that is required, okay? Alrighty, and um, so then we're going to talk about now um, repair of adjacent um, tissue transfers, okay? So an adjacent tissue transfer um, can also be referred to as a rearrangement procedure, or you might simply just see it referred to as a ATT. Um, sometimes it'll say ATT slash R for adjacent tissue transfer um, rearrangement. Um, so this is a medical procedure where flat sections of the healthy skin or other tissues are transferred or transplanted to an area 
that's adjacent to a skin defect, okay? And this includes moving part of the skin from one area to an adjacent area while leaving at least one side of the flap, which would be the move skin intact just to, um, that so that it retains that blood supply to the graft, okay? Um, incisions are made and the skin is undermined and moved over to cover the defective area, leaving um, that, like I said, the connected portion intact, okay? And then the flap will be then sutured in place, all right? And um, these procedures are typically performed for people who wanna cover up skin perfections. You know, it can be used for scars, lacerations, lesions, um, things like that, okay? Okay, and some of your keywords here. Oh, um, one of the main things um, to remember here is for full thickness repair of the lip or eyelid. Okay, so if you're dealing with a lip or eyelid, you want to see the respective anatomical subsections. So you'll refer to the appropriate um, sections in your manual for the lips or eyelid. Okay. Um, some key words here is going to be Z-plasty. These, the, these are some of the types of ATTs. We have Z-plasty, Y-plasty, VY-plasty, rotation flap, random island flap, advancement flap. Those are keywords to look out for, okay? Um, uh, pay attention, you see the little eyes there. So that's um, for your, just watch out for these guidelines. Um, these codes do not apply to direct closures or rearrangements of traumatic wounds that are incidentally result um, that incidentally result in these configurations. Okay. And um, another biggie that you need to remember with these is that the excision of a benign or a malignant lesion is bundled, okay? We do not code it separately, okay? So again, the excision of a benign or a malignant lesion is included with these ATTs, meaning they are not coded separately. So you see the little bundled symbol there? So just remember that. Okay, and here, if you see on the right side here, we have some definitions of what each one of these are, and you'll see in your book, um, I actually, I'm not sure if this one is in the book or not. Hmm. I'm not sure if this, this one is in your book or if this was taken from another book. I think you do have an example of some of these, um, these um, ATTs in your manual, so just, just take a look at that. But um, just real quickly, let's go over these. The Z-plasty, this is the technique of making an incision along a contracture, scar, or wound, along with two additional incisions, one above and another below the first incision, okay? These incisions are generally placed at a 60-degree angle to the first incision, um, creating a Z formation, hence the name Z-plasty. <laughs> um, the W-plasty is often performed to release or prevent tension along a linear scar with both in which both edges of the wound defect are trimmed into the shape of a W or multiple Ws. Your VY plasty is the technique of creating a V-shaped incision, okay? And your rotation flap is a curvilinear flap that extends to the defect to be closed. You see that right here, um, the example of rotation flap here in example B, okay? You have your, um, your primary defect, Okay, and then you have your secondary defect that was created there. And then your advancement flap, you'll see an example of that in A, right? Example A right there. And that's a creation of a flap that involves incising, undermining, and moving a flap of tissue forward to cover the deflet, um, to cover the defect, sorry. Um, the flap is then sutured into place. Okay. And again, you have your primary defect and your secondary defect there. Okay. And underneath there, it kind of just shows you how it how it's all done. Okay, the the skin is taken, and just like it it says, it's flapped over and it's sutured into place. Alrighty, and um, those the the primary and the secondary defect are added together to get the um, to determine your code. Okay. Alrighty. And um, we have a scenario for you. So Mrs. J, would you like to read this one? I certainly will. All right, thank you, Mrs. Tracy. A, 15220B, 40654C, 14040D, 14040131132. A 29-year-old female involved in a motor vehicle accident accident was brought into the ED via ambulance. 
the patient sustained severe facial trauma. After a comprehensive examination, it was determined that the patient's trauma was isolated to the mouth area and a complex full thickness repair of the lips was necessary. Due to the location of the wound, the tissue adjacent to the wound was stretched just enough to cover and repair the wound. The patient is expected to have minimal scarring. Which procedure codes best describe this encounter? All right, coders, we're going to give you one minute and a half. Good luck. Okay, okay. All right, so let's go ahead, get your answers in, and I'm going to go ahead and go over this one with you all now. Okay, so our answer is going to be B, and my keywords here, I have 29-year-old severe facial trauma, mouth area, complex full thickness repair, lips, a tissue adjacent to the wound, repair, Okay, whoops, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Okay, so first of all, I'm looking at C and D. I wanna look at these codes first because I noticed they share the same um, answer, the first listed code, 14040. So let's look at that. Okay, so this is for adjacent tissue transfer or rearrangement, and we have our some of our areas here, forehead, cheeks, chin, mouth, neck, axilla, genitalia, hands or feet. Um, defect 10 square centimeters or less. All right, so remember we were just reviewing these guidelines and the first thing that we see under our adjacent tissue transfer or rearrangement is that it tells us for a full thickness repair of a, the lip or eyelid, it's very specific, lip or eyelid, we're gonna see the respective anatomical subsections, okay? So I'm gonna take you there in a, in a little bit. So based off of this, we're gonna go to the, the appropriate um, section for the lips, okay? So in this case, we are not gonna report 14040 because we are dealing with a full thickness repair here of the lips. So in that case, we're gonna get rid of C and D, just like that right off the bat. Now I wanna look at 15220, and that is for a full thickness graft, okay? We have a repair here, and also if you look, wrong area, and we want to look at the, the appropriate um, section, okay? So we that is going to be incorrect as well, okay? And we are gonna get rid of A. Now I wanna look at 40654, and this is our repair here. So this tells us 40654, um, if we read the parent code, this is repair, uh, full thickness of the lip, and if you look at um, down below on, at the code level, over one half vertical height or complex, okay? So it says it could be over one half vertical height or a complex. And if we look up at our scenario, I see my keyword there. This is a complex repair of the lips, 
okay? And according to that code language and what our guideline is telling us, this is the, the section that we wanna be in. So 40654 is going to be our answer, okay? All right. Okay, I think we are good and I'm ready to move on. I wanna talk to y'all about skin replacement surgery, okay? So, oops, sorry. Um, okay, so skin replacement surgery, give me one second. Okay, um, so, so basically this is the skin grafting, okay? And skin grafting is a type of graft surgery that involves the transplantation of skin and that transplanted um, skin or tissue is called the skin graft, okay? Um, things that you need to remember here is if uh, your, well, your guideline here would be was wound prep performed. So that's something you want to pay attention to in your documentation. Also want to know um, the type of graft you're dealing with. Okay. If you, if it's an allograft, an autograft, xenograft, etc. Okay. Also, you want to know the thickness. Was this a full um, thickness, a split thickness? Um, was this a epi or dermal? Okay, and we want to code these according to the body area. So let me take you to the guidelines here, <laughs> make it easier. Okay, so the top part here I do want to read to you. So this is skin, re skin replacement surgery consists of surgical preparation and topical placement of an autograft, including tissue cultured autograft um, or skin replace or skin substitute graft okay such as a homograft allograft or xenograft okay so again those are some keywords that you're going to be looking for the graft is anchored using the individual's choice of fixation when services are performed in the office routine dressings are not uh, or sub dressing supplies are not reported separately. So those would be bundled, okay? When the services are performed in the office, those dressings are bundled, okay? All righty, and... Okay, so um, there's some things that are that we want to, I want to kind of draw your attention to up here. You see some of the notations, the autographs and tissue cultured autographs include the harvest and or application of the autologous skin graft. Okay, so that is bundled. Repair of the donor site requiring skin graft or local flap is reported separately. So you notice the add, the, the plus sign there. So your harvest um, is bundled. Um, However, the repair of the donor site requiring the skin graft is reported separately, okay? Um, also, removal of current graft and our simple cleansing of the wound is also going to be bundled when it's performed. Um, do not report 97602. Debridement, however, is considered a separate procedure, okay? So debridement is going to be bundled, but if gross contamination is done or require or that requires um, uh, prolonged cleansing, um, then it can be reported separately, but if not, then it is going to be considered bundled, okay? Um, and let's see what else. Oh, and just so you know, it gives you, it talks about autographs, tissue cultured autographs up there, then we have our skin substitute graphs down below, okay, whoops. Okay, and our skin substitute grafts include non-autologous human skin, um, dermal or epidermal. Okay, so know if you're coding dermal or epidermal there, cellular and acellular. Um, and some keywords for these skin substitute grafts are going to be homograft and allograft. Okay, um, non-skin substitute graft, xenograft. and select the appropriate code from 15002 to 15005 based upon the location and the size of the resultant defect. So you're gonna see these codes are coded based on location and the size of the defect, okay? For multiple wounds, you're gonna sum the surface area of all wounds from all anatomical sites that are grouped together in the same code descriptor. So just pay attention to the code language um, and what's, um, how they're categorizing those locations, okay? All right, and we have another scenario, and Mrs. J, would you like to read this one? Thank you, Mrs. Tracy. I sure do. A15273 
15275150259 modifier and 15004 with a 59 modifier B15273 RT15277 RT15002 RT15003 RT C15273 RT15275 RT15276 RT 15200RT with a 59 modifier and 15004RT with a 59 modifier. And finally, D, 15273RT, 15277RT, 15002RT, and 15004RT. Suzanne, a 16-year-old, was trapped in a car when it caught fire. They were able to get her out quickly, but she sustained significant burns on her right arm as well as her right hand and thumb. She was taken to the burn unit where they determined that she had third-degree burns on her right arm, 100 square centimeters, her hand, 25 square centimeters, and thumb two square centimeters. The surgical assistant surgically prepared the wounds and a bovine dermal matrix full thickness skin graft was grafted to the prepared burns and secured. What CPT codes are appropriate for this encounter? Okay, coders, you have one and a half minutes. Okay, that is time. Get your answers in. And while you're getting your answers in, I just want to kind of observe something that I'm seeing here. Um, in my answers, I noticed that A, B, C, and D all have the same first listed code. However, there is a little bit of difference with A. We don't have any modifiers here in A. So I want to see what that's all about. So that's my first observation. And I like to look at you know, what other modifiers I have. I have some modifier 59 here um, and a lot of the same codes that we're gonna be using. So let's go ahead. Um, don't let this one um, intimidate you. I always tell that, tell my students that in the classroom that, um, you know, sometimes we look at these scenarios and they have a lot of codes and we might get a little bit intimidated by that. But um, when we have our, our CPT manuals documented correctly, and Mrs. J spoke with you all about Chen earlier, um, it really does help us get to the correct answer quickly and accurately. And as you cement those guidelines down, you're gonna find yourself getting faster and faster, okay? All right, so our answer is C, and let's find out why. Our keywords, we have a 16-year-old burns, uh, right arm, right hand, and thumb, uh, we have third degree burns, right arm, 100 square centimeters, hand, 25 square centimeters, and thumb, two square centimeters. Um, this, these were also, these wounds were also surgically prepared, and a bovine dermal matrix full thickness graft was applied. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and prepared burns. Okay, so we're coding here for the full thickness graft here. And remember, we have to also ask ourselves, was um, wound preparation performed? And the answer is yes, because it says that um, the surgical assistant surgically prepared the wounds, okay, for this graft. All right, so let's look at these codes here. All right, so I like to chart things um, when I'm dealing with multiple things like this different locations and when I have to add um, body areas together and stuff it just kind of helps me to have a visual so hopefully it helps you as well um, so I just listed here what we're dealing with okay so this patient has third degree burns on her right arm 100 square centimeters so that's documented here in this chart um, also we have um, hand and thumb that we're dealing with hand is 25 square centimeters and thumb is two square centimeters okay so the first thing that I notice is that this these burns are um, to the patient's right arm, okay? So that would indicate that we need a modifier, right? We need that RT modifier. So when I was looking, and the reason why we do read our answers first is because we want to kind of see some things that we want to, when we're, when we're um, approaching our scenario, we want to kind of... Um, have a little uh, inside knowledge on what's going on. Okay, so if we read our answers first, we can kind of determine, hey, I see that all these have RT modifier, but that A doesn't. So let's find out why when we're reading the scenario. So this is um, to the right arm. We do need that RT modifier. So right away, I can go ahead and eliminate A. Okay, so we wanna eliminate as quickly as we can whatever code we know is not correct. Okay, and that is wrong because we don't have any modifiers there. All right, so let's move on and let's look at 15273. And this is the application of the skin substitute graft to the trunk, arms, I see the keyword, legs, um, total wound surface area greater than or equal to 100 square centimeters. So this 15273 covers um, the first 100 square centimeters um, in a patient that's 10 years of age and older. Our patient is 16 years old here. So we are going, I like that. So because if we look here, this covers the arm up to 100 square centimeters. And we have that right here that first um in the in the chart the first one is the right arm 100 square centimeters so that code right there is going to be for that for the right arm 100 square centimeters is going to be 15273 rt modifier which we are in luck there because b c and d has that exact code okay so i like that so we're going to move on now to our second codes um and and see you know See, and just kind of uh, figure out what else we can eliminate. Okay, so um, we are gonna look at the um, 15275 here. So we have our um, 15275 in answer C, and then 15277 is our second listed in B and D. So let's go ahead and look at 15275. And that is for the, um, the other body areas, okay? If we read this, it's application of skin substitute graft to face, scalp, eyelids, mouth, neck, ears, orbits, genitalia, hands, okay, and or multiple digits. So that covers our hands and or multiple digits. So remember when we were talking about, the, we were just discussing guidelines before this, um, I said that um, same body area you're gonna add together, okay? So since these are in the body, same body area, um, according to the code description, we would add those together so that um, hand and thumb get at it. So we were dealing with 27 um, square centimeters there, okay? All right, so this covers the first 25 square centimeters or um, less wound surface area. So that covers the first square, um, this 15275 covers our first 25 square centimeters. So that would cover that, but we have a problem because we still have to cover the remaining two. So that add, that's where that add-on code comes in. It covers each additional 25 square centimeters. All right, so, so um, we would code 15275RT. And then since we have two remaining and this um, 15276 covers each additional or part thereof, okay, so we would cover that at, two additional with 15276, okay, RT modifier. And if I look down at my answers, I see that in answer C, okay? But, and then also just read your parenthetical guidelines underneath your code. It says that we can use um, 15276 in conjunction with 275, that's good. Um, 
And then it tells us, if we look at the second parenthetical guideline there, for total wound surface area greater than or equal to 100 square centimeters, see 15277, 15278. So I see 15277 in both answer B and D, and we are not in this body area dealing with um, greater than or equal to one square centimeters for this hand and thumb body area. So that 15277 is going to be incorrect. We can get rid of that. Okay, so so now I'm down to C, but I always like to just take a peek at the rest of my codes just to make sure, okay? So now we're gonna code the surgical preparation, and here's my chart for my wound prep, and here's our code, 15002 is for surgical prep or creation of the recipient site by excision of wounds, burn, eschar, or scar, okay? Um, and we're dealing with the burn there, um, and this covers the first square, in, or sorry, this is the, sorry, the location is our trunk, arms, and legs. And again, this covers the first 100 square centimeters. All right, so for the right arm there, that surgical prep code is gonna be 15002, okay? And then we have our um, 15004 is gonna be the surgical prep for the hand and the thumb, because again, those are gonna be added together according to the co code description, okay? And that covers the first 100 square centimeters. So basically, we just have 27 there for the surgical prep, and that um, surgical prep code for the hand and thumb will be 15004, okay? So that all checks out, looks good, and C is the correct answer. All righty, so hopefully um, everybody got that. If you wanna review this later, you can always go back and listen to the playback. If you wanna just take a snapshot, go right ahead. And I'm gonna go ahead and move on if that's okay. And we're gonna talk about, oh, sorry. This is um, something else you might wanna take a little snapshot of. This is a cool little chart to kind of, um, just to reference when you're dealing with these, um, the wounds. So just as we were um, looking at it in the code descriptor, 15271 is covering the first square centimeters, um, wounds up to 100 square centimeters, and it tells you the anatomical location in the third column there. Okay, so you're dealing with your small wounds up at top and the large wounds and the bottom. So if you want to just reference this, I'm not going to go through all of it, but you can go ahead and take a snapshot of it and um, use it for your reference if it helps you. All right, let's move right along. All right, and the last thing, I'm just gonna talk about some coding tips here. So um, the first one is the application of skin substitute graphs is distinguished according to the anatomical location and surface area, not by the product description. So basically it's just, um, to sum it up, just um, need to know the location and the size, okay? and that would be your location according to the book. So just pay attention to the code descriptor. Um, and then when multiple wounds are treated, add or sum the surface area of all wounds from all anatomical sites that are grouped together in the same code descriptor. We just did that, okay? So add same wounds of the same location as according to the, um, the code language. And then when determining the body surface area for skin replacement codes that reference measurements of 100 square centimeters or 1% um, or this is 1% of body area of infants and children, the measurement of 100 square centimeters is applicable only to adults and children that are 10 years of age and older, okay? So just pay attention when it's saying that 100 square centimeters, that is for um, 10 years and older. Now, if you're dealing with a patient that's under the age of 10, it would be 1% of the body area of infants and children, okay? And when repairing a donor site that requires a skin graft or local flap, you report the repair separately. Okay. And I believe that is it. What do you say, Mrs. J? I say that was superb. And you know what? Some of these students are doing amazing. And you know what? It's time to move on. Thank you so much, Mrs. Tracy. Let me see Welcome. if I can go ahead and change presenter.
Awesome, and I will see you all in the chat. So ask away, ask your questions, and thank you for your participation. Awesome, thank you. Uh, thanks again, Mrs. Tracy. Wasn't she amazing? She is, she just is. All right, so I just want to put this little note up. I know we discussed it at the beginning of this presentation, but some of you may have come in late you didn't know if you have questions i know some of you are asking questions and expect the announcer to do to answer and we just can't we have to keep the flow going and we don't want to stop but feel free to ask away in the chat ask away the instructors are there you'll know them by their tag it'll say amci instructor followed by their name and i'm in there too as some of you can see all right Let's move on to our next subject. We're going to talk about repair. We're still in repairs. Yes, there are several repairs. And if you can recall, the table of content outlines the repairs. There's about seven of them. So let's go ahead and review the repair called a flap. Now, a skin flap is a healthy, it's healthy skin tissue that's partially detached and moved to cover a nearby wound. Sounds like an ATT, but the difference is the ATT is adjacent to the wound. Now, a flap, the skin is near the wound. All right, so a skin flap contain, can contain skin, fat, muscle, and even vessels. So, and also not all flaps are nearby. Some are not nearby and we call those other flaps. But for the most part, the general flaps are nearby and do not confuse these flaps with adjacent tissue transfers. All right, in your book on page 96, you've got two wounds. You've got an axial pattern um, forehead wound flap that was performed. You also have the mid face flap surgery, which is um, a, it's more intense. You've got a vascular um, pedicle flap. So let's go ahead and let's look at the guidelines for flaps. And again, I want to point out when you see this blue bold, this begins your code series and you'll often find key guidelines in this section. So not a whole lot of guideline going on, but on page 95, you'll see that they discuss skin and or deep tissue flaps. Now these are represented by code series 15733 through 15738, pr pretty much five or six codes. And these are described by the donor site. Now where you're getting the flap from, so it's coded according to um, the muscle, the muscle and the, the the muscle and the fat myocutaneous or fasciocutaneous fat that's your fascia excuse me so um these are just pretty much straightforward and these codes do not include extensive immobilization such as cast and things like that you're going to have to code them additionally and um if you have to repair the donor site then you're going to have to code that additionally too or separate. And then you've got some um, some guidelines below. But again, these are flaps that involve muscles and fascia. Now let's talk about these other flaps. Now these other flaps can have a blood supply and the donor tissue, tissue is not ne necessarily next to the wound. So these describe um, cutaneous flaps transposed into a nearby but not immediately adjacent defect with a pedicle that incorporates um, vessels. So the flap is typically, and I'm reading it directly from here because they, they say it best, the, tap, the flap is typically transferred through a tunnel underneath the skin and sutured into its new position. And the donor site is closed directly. So this other flap section also talks about neurovascular pedicles. So 
These are more extensive. This means that they are trying to maintain the blood supply, the nerves and the vessels. So, you know, that's a little more involved and we've got a scenario that's coming up that's actually going to um, help you understand how to code these graphs. And again, the other flaps and graphs can have a blood supply and the donor tissue is not necessarily next to the wound, it can be. All right, so I think the best way to describe how to code for these graph, um, these flaps are, <sighs> all right. So when you're coding, there are some key terms such as delay, formation, and transfer. So when you're coding for the delay, the delay is, well, first let's code, when you're coding for the formation, you're coding for the creation of the, the flap or maybe a pedicle. You're, you're coding and the scenario is going to actually show you um, or tell you how a pedicle is created. And also too, if that's not enough, if you check out our lectures, we go more in depth and you can understand and things are, are presented in a more, um, how can I say, it, it, we're more in depth and the pace is a little more slow and more visual for you. So, but this is a little more advanced. No, not a little more, a lot more advanced. But nonetheless, you've got three procedures that you'll be coding for. You're gonna code for the formation or creating of that pedicle. You're gonna code next for cutting off the pedicle. And finally, you're gonna code for the transfer of the flap. Not necessarily all the time, but just know that you could code for all three or just one be sure to code what the documentation says. All right, so let's get going. I just want to remind you that if, if mobile, um, immobilization devices are provided, you code them separately. They are not included in these flaps. Now, um, I would give you an example, but I think this scenario does it. So Mrs. Tracy, I'm going to read this myself. I'm going to let you take a break. And here is your scenario. A, 15574-1561059 modifier. B, 15570-1560058 modifier. C, 15570-1560059 and 58 modifier. 15650 and 59 and 58 modifier. And finally, D, 15570-1560058 modifier, 15730-59 and 58 modifiers. A 29-year-old flight attendant was airlifted emergently to a skin repair special, specialty hospital after sustaining significant injuries to her face after an automobile accident. The patient's injuries involved excessive loss of tissue of the left cheek, which included the skin through the fascia and muscle. The physicians decided to take viable tissue from her abdomen to repair the defect. To create the graft, the physician had to generate enough viable myocutaneous tissue with blood supply. All right, coders, this right here, the doctor is generating a pedicle with myocutaneous tissue with blood supply. All right, back to the scenario. To achieve this, the doctor sutured the patient's wrist to her abdomen. Then the site was manipulated daily um, until, um, for a period of two months until enough skin and myocutaneous tissue with blood supply was available for um, successful excision and transfer to the left cheek. The patient returned to the OR where the newly created tissue, along with the blood supply, was resected from the graft area, then carefully applied to the defect. The flap was secured in place with sutures. The donor area was closed in layered fashion. 
what procedure codes best describe this encounter? Okay, coders, I'm gonna give you one and a half minute and I want to point out that you need to know what you are coding for. Are you coding for the creation of the flap? Are you coding for the cutting off or the delay of the flap? Or are you coding for the transfer of the flap? Or are you coding for them all? All right, coders, you have one and a half minute. Pause the presentation. Well, look, I'm saying pause the presentation. I'm so used to saying that. We are live. So you got one and a half minutes. All right, coders, you know what? I'm going to have to pause you one second. I see a little blunder. I want to fix it. And unfortunately, I would have done it beforehand, but we are live. So in real time, I am fixing a scenario. So it's, it's not going to be perfect, but let's go. Hopefully you can see my screen. I think I can see it. All right, so the answer is B. Ah, <laughs> the answer is B. Forget that D on that screen. It is B. All right, I'm gonna tell you why in a minute because I was forensic. I wasn't forensic earlier, but the answer is B. If you can change that for me, Mrs. Tracy, that would be fabulous. And we're gonna move on and I'm gonna tell you why it's B. But first things first, I'm going to highlight my keywords. Um, loss of tissue of the left cheek, the skin through the fascia and, and, the fascia and muscle, create a graft, myocutaneous tissue with blood supply, doctor sutured the wrist to her abdomen and come on, two months, the manipulation took place for two months, then successful excision and transfer with blood supply, carefully secured in place with sutures. All right, so this doesn't mean this is like perfect in terms of keywords, but these are the keywords that I have here. I'm not saying I came up with these keywords, but if my colleagues like it, I like it too. All right, 
So first things first, we have to figure out what is taking place. Are they creating the pedicle? Are they transferring the pet pedicle? Are they um, delaying? Are they gonna do a delay? Remember, um, creation means formation. Delay means cut, transfer means transfer. All right, so pretty much all three of these things took place. They created it, so this is the formation. All right, and if you look at code 15570, this is the code for form formation of direct or tubed pedicle. This is definitely a pedicle because we are preserving the blood supply. And this is the correct location on the trunk. Okay. And we like this, so let's just kind of hang on to that. All right, and they formated, the, the formation of the pedicle was carried out on the abdomen and those, those codes represent where the pedicle was created from. And next, um, this is how it was done. This is how the, it, it was carried out. And we have a delay. A delay means that they're cutting it. They're cutting it off. And we that did happen. They cut it from the trunk because remember, it says excision. Also, transferring took place. Sorry, we're a little out of order. Right here, 15650, that's your transfer from abdomen to wrist. So we like that too. So let's take a look at our codes. A is incorrect, 15574, because this is the code for the forehead, cheeks, chin, mouth, neck, axillary, genitalia, hands, or feet. So that means that's where the pedicle was, was created, and that is not where it happened. So we're going to get rid of that, and that leaves B, C, and D. So we're also going to get rid of D. Why are we getting rid of D? Because D is coding for the mid face. It's coding for the transfer to the mid face. So that's wrong. And C is incorrect because it's coding for 15650. This is the, the code for the transfer um, to from the abdomen to the wrist or anywhere. You know why it's wrong? I'm gonna tell you why it's wrong. Because if you look at code 15572, this code includes the transfer. I'm being forensic. This is formation of direct or tubed pedicle with or without transfer. So we're not gonna code any transfer. So any code with a transfer is eliminated and that's gonna eliminate C. And our answer is B. Okay, coders, how do you feel? Sorry that was a little jumbled, but I saw that the answer was switched around and I had to quickly rearrange it. But remember, when you're coding for these flaps, you could have code for one of three um, procedures and you gotta make sure are you coding for the formation? Are you coding for the creation of the flap? Are you coding for the transfer? And if you don't know what they mean, formation, I would put right here, creation. This delay, I would put cutting right here. And transfer, I would put transfer. You know, that's what you're gonna do. And cutting means to cut away. And there you go. So hopefully you got that correct. And if you did, outstanding. But if you learned something, that is priceless. All right, Mrs. Tracy. Wow, great explanation. And that is why you are the forensic coding queen, Mrs. J. <laughs> great catch <laughs> on that. <laughs> okay, so we are moving right along to talk about burns. Okay, so there are three types of burns. Uh, we have our first degree burns and these are considered mild. Um, they result in pain and reddening of the epidermis. So that's just affecting the outer layer of the skin. Then we have um, 
uh, our second degree burns, and those are basically our partial thickness burns, and those affect the epidermis, and and they could go into the dermis, the lower layer of the skin, and they cause pain, redness, swelling, and blistering. And then our most severe would be the third degree burns. Those are full thickness burns, and those go all the way through the dermis and affect deeper tissues, okay? And um, they can result in, um, you know, the charred skin, maybe numb, um, and these, um, these burns can require some treatment. So we're gonna talk about those, all right? Okay, give me one second. All right, so um, on page 99, we have um, our, our um, guidelines for our burns. And so um, just remember here that these are not grafting, okay? These are basically your um, dressing treatments and debridements and such, okay? So code, um, codes 16000 to 160. 36 refer to local treatment of burned surface only. Um, code 16020 to 16030 include the application of materials such as dressings not described in codes 15111 100 to 15278. Um, we want to list the percentage of body surface area involved and the depth of the burn. So we need to know the body surface area that is involved. So to pay attention to um, the provider's documentation on that, the percentage. Um, and we are going to talk about, um, oh, one before we move on to that, um, and also pay um, special attention to this, for necessary related medical services, such as hospital visits um, or detention and management of burn patients, you wanna refer to your ENM section or the medicine sections, okay? And, like I said, this is not where we code our skin grafts or skin substitutes. For that, we want to refer to codes 15100 to 15770. Oh, sorry, 15777. Okay. And if you, um, here, here's the codes just so you can see. Um, they are, we're dealing with first degree burns, partial thickness, um, you see dressings and debridement and escherotomy. So this is what this is coding for right here, okay? And on page, let's see, I think it's page 100, there's a chart there. That chart is called the Lund Browder classification method. Um, that's a method that's used for um, determining the extent, depth, and the percentage of burns. And if you see here, you notice that it is, um, it is separated between your the area, the, so the body location, and also the age, okay? So um, just make sure that when you're coding here that you're in the right category, okay, the right column. And again, like I said, these are not skin crafts. Okay, so I do have a scenario for you, and I'll read this one, actually. Uh, we have A16030, 16035, modifier 51, B16030, 16035, modifier 51, 16036, modifier 51, C16030 times 5, 16035, modifier 51, 16036, um, times five, D one six zero 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 one six zero three five times four modifier fifty one one six zero three six times five. A thirty year old patient male patient who sustained second degree burns to his entire back in a house fire um, will have daily dressing changes and debridement for the first five days. The procedure um, was painful and required anesthesia. The following five days dead tissue was incised from the area each day. Which of the following answers best describe this encounter? So I will give you a minute and a half. Good luck.
All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. So again, observing my answers, I noticed that A, B, and C have the code 16030, but we do have a multiplier on answer C, and um, D is totally different than the rest. So I usually like to look at the, I call them the oddballs, I like to look at those first, but let's go ahead and see. The answer is C. Okay. Let's find out why. I have my keywords here, 30-year-olds, second-degree burns, entire back, debridement for the first five days, procedure painful, required anesthesia, and the following five days, um, dead tissue was incised each day, okay? On our, let's go ahead and look at, um, first of all, we're gonna look at the debridement code first, but if I look at this 16000, Okay, that is going to be for um, initial treatment of a first degree burn. And in my scenario, I don't see any mention of a first degree burn. This is for a second degree burn. So I am not going to code this as 16000 based on the degree of the burn. So the wrong severity. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of answer D right off the bat. And then we're just, um, we have 16030. So, and that's in all of our answers there. And that, our parent code, Sorry, that's my time. That's my timer trying to go off again. Um, okay, so 16020 um, is our parent code for 16030, and this is for the dressing and or the debridement of a partial thickness burn. So um, as I was discussing earlier in a little discussion with burns, the second degree burns, those are partial thickness burns, okay? So this would definitely fit that. Um, and this can be for dressing and or debridement, okay? We always wanna emphasize the and or or, because that could be either or. Um, and um, I like that code, and if we look down at 16030, um, it says large, more than one extremity or greater than 10% total body surface area. So you might be saying, well, how do we know what the percentage is? Well, that chart that I showed you, the Lundbrower um, chart, Okay, that's that classification method and it goes according to the body area and also the age. So we are gonna reference this chart to be able to know the percentage that we're dealing with. So it says in our scenario that this patient's entire back was burned, okay? So we're gonna go ahead on the, this chart and look down for the entire back. That would be the posterior trunk, okay? That would be the back, right? The back side and the full back was burned. So if we go over to adult, because this is a 30 year old, we're gonna go under the column adult and this says that it's 13%, okay? So we're gonna count that as 13%. So keep that in mind and we're gonna go back and that chart is on page 100, just, so, um, just in case, um, you can't locate it in your 2019 CPT manual. Okay, so go back to this chart, or go back to your code, 16030, and that is definitely gonna be where we're coding at, 16030, which is greater than, it could be one extremity or greater than 10%. So remember, we were dealing with 13%, so I like 16030, that's a great code. And going to our scenario, that debridement, um, dressing changes and debridement there is for the first five days. So we're gonna code that for each day. So it would be times five, okay? So I see that in answer C. All right, I like that. And then if we, oops, sorry, you know what my on click is off here, but A and B, it should, it, that box should be around A and B, 16030, because it's missing your multiplier there. Okay, and then next, I just like to look at all the rest of the codes here. Um, we're gonna code for that dead tissue that was incised. Okay, so we're getting rid of A and B because it's missing the multiplier. But like I said, I like to move on and just look at all my codes. So 16035 is for escherotomy, initial incision. And it's really important to know your medical med terms here. Um, that escherotomy is for um, dead tissue remover, removal, that's basically incising down and removing that um, dead tissue, okay? So it says that the, um, the following five days, dead tissue was incised from the area each day. So we're gonna code 16035 for the initial incision. And then because it was five days, we're gonna use the add-on code for each additional, okay? And answer C is going to be the correct answer. All right. 
Okay, great job. Everybody's doing wonderful. And I'm going to move on and we're going to talk about the next subject. As we start to wind down a little bit, we're going to talk about destruction. And destruction um, basically means the ablation of um, benign, pre-malignant, or um, malignant tissue by any method. And this can be with or without um, corruptment, the scraping or debridement. This also includes local anesthesia and it usually does not require closure. Okay, and um, by, when it says by any method, these are some key words here too. So by any method includes electrosurgery, cryosurgery, laser and chemical treatment, and pay attention to here, some more keywords. Lesions include condylomata, papillomata, uh, mollusc <laughs> molluscum, um, contagiosum, sorry, herpatic lesions, warts, um, example, common, planter, and flat, milia, or other benign premalignant, example, actinic keratosis, or malignant lesions. So those are some, some um, key terms that you really want to draw your attention to, okay, when you're coding um, for lesions and the destruction of lesions. So know the methods and know the types of lesions. Okay, and also pay attention, there's a lot of um, guidelines that are underneath um, underneath this description here, and um, it, refer it refers you to different, different um, codes if you're, you know, for, for particular, um, specific, more specific things that you might be coding for, okay? Laser treatment of inflammatory skin disease, you're going to reference your, um, I believe that's the medicine section, preparing your cutting of benign hyperkeratotic lesions um, such as corns or calluses you're going to reference another um, another some other codes here in the integ section so just pay attention to your those guidelines there it might refer it might refer you somewhere else okay all right and um your guidelines here um, some more guidelines for multiple lesions you want to sequence the most complex first um, watch your diagnosis benign pre-malignant and malignant they are not the same okay the word each um, means that you have to code each lesion separately so that we refer to those as game changers always make sure that if it says each in your code descriptor that you're coding each one separately okay um, and again your um, your keywords you have a lot of keywords here to reference okay and I have another scenario for you and I'll I can read this one we have a 17004 B, 17000, modifier 59, 17263, modifier 59, 17110, modifier 59, C, 17110, 17000, modifier 59, 17003, modifier 59, 17263, modifier 59, or D, 17623, 17000, modifier 59, 17000 times 12, modifier 59, 17110, modifier 59. A 47-year-old truck driver with a history of non-melanoma skin cancer presents to the dermatologist with several lesions on his neck, trunk, and arms. After examination, the physician diagnoses the seven lesions on his neck as benign. There were 13 lesions on his trunk diagnosed as actinic keratosis. The 2.2 centimeter lesion on his arm was malignant. All the lesions were destroyed with cryosurgery treatment. Which procedure code or codes best describe this encounter? So like I said, don't let these longer ones um, with a lot of codes intimidate you. Um, you know, I think if you are more seasoned, you can probably come up with the answer rather quickly. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put myself on mute and I will give you a minute and, your, and a half and your time begins now.
Okay, how did you do? Let's get your answers in. Okay, so let's go ahead. The thing that I noticed here is that A only has one little single code by itself, and then we have a lot of other codes in B, C, and D. Um, and I have some multipliers, modifier 59. So let's go ahead and see what our answer is. Our answer is going to be D, okay? Let's find out why. All right, so we have a 47-year-old, has a history, non-melanoma. Um, the dermatologist says that there are seven lesions on the patient's neck that are benign, 13 lesions on his trunk um, that are diagnosed as actinic keratosis, and we have a 2.2 centimeter lesion on his arm that is malignant, okay? So, you know, I like charts to make it look, um, you know, just to make, just to kind of make it make more sense. And <laughs> this actually helps me. So the visuals definitely help. So I actually, sorry, my screen. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I was, my keywords were still coming up. So we have a 2.2 centimeter malignant lesion on the arm. And then these are all destroyed by cryosurgery treatment. So here's my chart. We are dealing with three different types of lesions. We have malignant, benign and actinic teratoses, those are all different. We can't add those together because they are different. So remember what I said, don't confuse those. These are not the same. So we would have to code each category, you know, separately. So we have a malignant lesion on the arm and this will, these um, lesions go according to size. So that's 2.2 centimeter as um, reported in our documentation here. The treatment's cryosurgery. So the treatment for all these are cryosurgery. We have a benign, seven benign lesions on the neck and we have 13 premalignant or uh, on the trunk. And if you remember looking at the guidelines, um, premalignant example of that was actinic keratosis. So this is a premalignant. So we have malignant, benign, and premalignant. So we're going to code for all of those. And we're gonna look up first, actually, I don't know why my, um, hmm. Maybe it's coming up on the other screen. <laughs> I think it, I put it on the wrong screen, but I wanted this 17004 to come up first. So if you reference that 17004 in your CPT manual, that is for the destruction um, by laser, electrosurgery, cryosurgery, chemosurgery, chemosur surgical corruptment of pre-malignant lesions, 15 or more, okay? So if we look at our chart here, we only have Mrs. 13. J. Yes, Mrs. J? Um, you know what? I was looking at the wrong screen and I was looking, I thought I was looking at my screen, but I'm actually looking at yours. I only, I see the previous scenario for the burns. You do? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. So maybe you're on the wrong... <gasps> slide oh, it's no. okay oh no okay you know what i think it was paused i think my screen yeah. was paused because i was trying to fix something oh my goodness i'm so sorry that's okay you might have to start at um i can go back and just hmm number 78 okay give me one right. second okay ah, thank you so much mrs Jay, and I apologize to everybody for that. <laughs> Everybody's over here probably saying, hey, can't see your screen. So that's okay. Um, uh, we'll just walk through this one together. You know, if you, okay. Oh, this one right here, sorry about that. Um, Mrs. J, is this the last one that you saw right here? You didn't see this one worked out? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. This right was not, yes, this was not worked out. This is uh -oh. where we were stalled. And I thought it was my screen. So Mrs. Oh. J, <laughs> just take it away. You can quickly go through it. Okay, so let's quickly go through this, and I apologize to everybody. So um, you can always go back and listen to the playback of this. That was totally my mistake, and I apologize. So let's go ahead and and go ahead and solve this. So it looks like you guys pr probably already um, did solve this, but you didn't see the explanation of it. So let's go ahead to, through the explanation. Okay, so our answer is going to be C. All right, and here is my keywords: thirty-year-old second degree burns, entire back, debridement for the first five days, 
um, procedure painful, required anesthesia, uh, following five days, uh, dead tissue in size each day. All right, so um, we're coding here for, um, first of all, we're gonna look up uh, debridement for the first five days. But the first thing I wanna look at is this answer D because 16000 is our oddball um, there. I like to call that the oddball because it doesn't match the other first listed codes. So I wanna look at that one. And um, this is for initial treatment of a first degree burn. So we are going to get rid of that because what are we coding? We're coding for a second degree burn, okay? Um, doesn't mention anything in our scenario about a first degree burn, so we're gonna get rid of answer D. All right, um, 16020 is the parent code for um, the remaining codes, 16030, and this is for dressing and or debridement of partial thickness, and that's what we're coding for, dressing changes and debridement uh, for the first five days. So we are, um, if we look at, Oops, sorry. If we look down, sorry, at one, I'm going to go back, 16030. This is for a large, um, more than one extremity or greater than 10 square or 10 percent total body surface area. So you might be asking yourself, like, why? Um, how, how do we know if it's greater than 10 percent? Well, we're going to reference back to that burn chart, the Lundbrower diagram that classification method. And this, this um, breaks down the percentages by um, the area and the patient's age. So since this is a 30 year old, we're gonna go to the, um, the adult column here. And this scenario says that the patient's entire back was burned. So we're gonna go to the posterior trunk, which is going to be the back and to the adult column that gives us a, um, 13, a percentage of 13, okay? So going back to our scenario and that code, um, we would be coding this at 16030 because this is for um, uh, uh, this is for a partial thickness burn, which is uh, um, also um, second degree burn is partial thickness and greater than 10%. We already determined that we are covering a burn area of 13%. So 16030, I like that. Um, however, if we look in C, it has a multiplier on it, which we're gonna need because we're coding for the first five days. So we're gonna code for each one of those days and 16030 and answer A and B does not have that, okay? So um, my on-click is a little off there, but that's supposed to be covering um, uh, 16030 and A and B. And so that would be incorrect. We're gonna get rid of A and B, and then we're gonna look at the remaining codes, okay? Um, Escarotomy um, in 16035, um, that is for incising the um, incision of the burn. And that's the next thing we're gonna code for. It says the next five days, um, dead tissue was incised from the area each day. So 16035 would cover the first one, okay? The first incision, and then the next one, is going to um, 16036, the add-on code, is going to cover the remaining, okay? And I believe that should be, you know what, that is wrong. That should be um, four. That should be four, okay? The add-on code right there, sorry, that's a typo right there, but it's covering the next, the 16035 would cover the first one, and then 16036 would cover the remaining four, okay? Apologize for that little typo there but our answer is going to be C, okay? All right, moving right along, we're gonna talk about destruction, and um, destruction means the ablation of benign, premalignant, or malignant tissue by any mes method, um, and this can include be with or without um, corretment, which is the scraping or debridement, and this includes local anesthesia, and it usually does not require closure. Okay, so um, any method includes, and you'll find this guideline on page 101, includes electrosurgery, cryosurgery, laser and chemical treatment, lesions, condylomata, papillomata, molly scum, <laughs> contagiosum, herpetic lesions, warts, um, such as common planter and flat, milia, or other benign or malignant, such as actinic keratoses, or malignant lesions, okay? So those are guidelines, okay? The um, destruction, um, the lesions, the type of lesions, and um, the, the method that's being performed. Those are really 
um, guidelines or keywords, sorry, that you want to pay attention to. And under that description, you want to pay attention to your guidelines. Okay, we have some parenthetical guidelines here that refer you to different sections um, or different areas within this integ section um, when you're dealing with um, other specific things. Okay, sometimes it might be referencing you to the medicine section, but um, some of the other ones are, are referring you to other codes within this integ section. Okay. All right, and here is our scenario for destruction. We have A17004, B17000, 17003, modifier 59, 17263, modifier 59, 17110, modifier 59, C17110, 17000, modifier 59, 17003, modifier 59, 17263, modifier 59, or D, 17263, 17000, modifier 59, 17003 times 12, modifier 59, 17110, modifier 59. A 47-year-old truck driver with a history of non-melanoma skin cancer presents to the dermatologist with several lesions on his neck, trunk, and arms. After examination, the physician diagnoses the, pa diagnoses the patient with, um, sorry, diagnoses the seven lesions on his neck as benign. There were 13 lesions on his trunk, trunk diagnosed as actinic keratosis. This 2.2 centimeter lesion on his arm was malignant. All of the lesions were destroyed with cryosurgery treatment. What procedure codes best describe this encounter? And I'll give you a minute and a half. Your time starts now. Okay, everybody, how did you do? And like I always say, don't let these scenarios with the with the, the multiple codes like this um, intimidate you. Uh, you'll find usually it's you can get to the correct answer rather quickly um, if you just know the guidelines. And um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So our answer is going to be D. Okay, and. Let's go ahead and find out why. We have my keywords are 47-year-old, history, non-melanoma, dermatologist, seven lesions, neck are benign, 13 lesions on the trunk diagnosed as actinic keratosis, and the 2.2 centimeter lesion on his arm is malignant. And all these lesions are destroyed with cryosurgery treatment. Okay, so I like to document, I like to document these in a chart when I'm dealing with these lesions. It helps me just to kind of better sort it out. So here we go. We have, um, and like I said before, these are not the same, malignant, benign, 
and actinic keratosis, also known as premalignant, are all different. So we're going to have to code each one of these um, separately, okay? And then also, if you notice in the second column, we have the location we're dealing with. So we have a malignant lesion on the arm, and those um, malignant lesions go according to size. So we're dealing with a 2.2 centimeter um, malignant lesion on the arm, um, and all the treatment, again, are um, cryosurgery. Um, the seven lesions on the neck are benign, and the 13 lesions on the trunk, those are the premalignant lesions, the actinic keratosis. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this, okay? And my uh, 17004, if you look that up, that is actually for destruction of premalignant lesions, 15 or more. So if we look at our chart over here, we our actinic keratosis is only 13, okay? So we can't code 17004, that's too many. So right away, based off of that, we can get rid of answer A, okay? Oh, there's my code, <laughs> now it comes up. Okay, so that 17004 is coding for 15 or more. We only have 13 of those actinic keratoses, so getting rid of answer A. Going now to 17000. Now that is another code for um, the destruction of premalignant lesion. Um, but 17000 is only coding for the first lesion, okay? And we have 13. So yeah, we can code 17000 for the first um, actinic keratosis, but we need that add-on code 17003 for the second through 14 lesions. So basically 17003, we would need to cover the remaining 12, okay? So we would code 17000 with 17003, um, 12 times, okay? So we need 17003 times 12. All right, so if I look in my at my answers over here, the only thing that I see with a times 12 would be answer D, okay? 17, um, B, 17003 um, doesn't have the multiplier and neither does answer C, okay? So right away, because this says each, and that's really important when you're going through your book and you're notating, make sure that you are drawing your attention to that. That means you have to code each one separately, okay? B and C are not coding each one separately. So we can get rid of B and C. And just like that, we're to um, our final answer here. But we, we still want to take a peek and make sure that everything looks correct, okay? So again, 17000, 17003 covers the 13 lesions. Um, of the premalignant actinic keratoses, and then 17, let's go to our 17273, or 17263, that's our malignant destruction, and lesion diameter, we need 2.2 centimeters, so that's right there, it's covered under 17263, and that is going to be listed first, because remember, we code our most complex first, so your malignant is going to be the most complex, and then finally, um, the premalignant would go next, and then your benign. We have to cover that seven lesions, benign lesions on the neck, okay? So 17110 covers the benign lesions up to 14 lesions, okay? So notice this one doesn't say each, it just says up to 14 lesions, so that 17110 covers all of those, okay? Just like that, our answer is D, okay? All right, I think that's it for me for now. Um, back to you, Mrs. J. Okay, that was incredible, Mrs. Tracy. You are incredible. Great explanations. Again, please forgive me for not um, recognizing that we were, I wasn't able to see your screen. So great job, Mrs. Tracy and coders. We're getting down to the wire. I think we've got two more. I believe so. I believe yeah. so. Okay, handing it back over to you. Thank you. All right, so getting down to the wire, as we've said, we are gonna talk about Mohs micrographic surgery. So hopefully you know what Mohs micrographic surgery. In fact, if you do know, that is great because knowing the procedure helps you with the coding. If you don't know, let me give you a little review. All right, so Mohs micrographic surgery, or Mohs for short, is a technique used to treat 
neoplasms, malignant neoplasms. It's used to remove skin cancer in critical locations. In addition to the head and the face, there are some critical locations that they um, that it's removed. And on the head, you right in this this image of this person right here. She's got a lesion right here. This is called the periorbital region. And often that's where you'll find some of those um, malignant lesions. And perioral, around the mouth, around the eyes, periauricular, peri perinasal, and your hands, feet, or genitalia. So these are some critical locations that these lesions can appear. And when they are in this area, a doctor performs most micrographic surgery. And what, it, what happens is the doctor operates into capacities. The doctor is the surgeon and the doctor is the pathologist. So what the doctor does is they um, excise the lesion and they'll, ex the first excision is called the um, stage. Then the physician or the surgeon will take that stage or that um, tissue and cut it up into what we call blocks. Then the, the surgeon goes over to the microscope, looks through the microscope to see if that lesion is still cancerous. So if it's still cancerous, the doctor will go back to the patient, slice off another stage, cut it up into blocks, go to the uh, microscope, see if there is cancer. And you know what? The doctor will continue this until there is no more cancer. So ladies and gentlemen, I've just described Mohs micrographic surgery. So let's look at these pictures. First, the thin layer is removed. That is a stage. Then the doctor will cut it up, go to the microscope. Then the next, let's say it's still cancer. The doctor will come back, remove another stage, then another, then another until all of the cancer is gone. So here are the guidelines for coding Mohs micrographic surgery, and you'll find these guidelines on page 102 of your CPT manual. And this is where, see this little green box? This is where I got the, this is where I know, this is how I know that the surgeon operates as the surgeon and the pathologist. Why is that important? Because if the doctor is operating in those two capacities, you do not code separately for uh, the surgical pathologist, all right? So that code that we're using for Mohs bundles both the surgery and the pathology. Now, if the doctor has to um, repair that lesion, let's say that doctor had to go really far and they have to repair it, and let's say that the doctor um, needs to use a flap or graft, you will code that separately. However, if a biopsy of a suspected skin cancer is performed on the same day as that Mohs surgery, because there was no prior pathology, you would report that also using those biopsy codes that we talked about. See my little plus? That means you're gonna code them separately and you will um, append a modifier, okay? So let's take a look at these parenthetical guidelines. It says if additional special pathology procedures, stains or immunostains are required, go ahead and see codes 88311 through 14 and 88342. These are your surgical pathology codes. And they tell you do not report 88314 in conjunction with your most codes codes 17311 through 17315 for frozen section stains. So don't do that. And remember I told you, do not, anytime I see a do not, I put my asterisk next to that parenthetical guideline. And finally, do not report 88302 through 88309. This is also surgical pathology on the same specimen as part of the Mohs surgery. So this is actually reaffirming that you do not use 
the pathology codes in addition to the MOS. And if you want to read these guidelines for yourself, feel free, page 102 in your CPT manual. Now also too, we have some coding tips that come directly from your principles of CPT coding. It says, do not report the Mohs surgery codes 17311 and 15 if one physician performs the surgical portion and another physician performs the pathology portion of the procedure. That is a good tip. Remember, one doctor has to perform both procedures. Um, another coding tip, report a first stage code, either code 17311 or 13, only once for each lesion treated using Mohs surgery at the same treatment session. All right, so a lot of times it doesn't make sense until you actually see the code. So we've got a scenario here and let me go ahead and read it. All right, we'll begin with the answers first. A, 17311, 17312 times four, 17313, 59 modifier, 17314, 59 modifier, 17315 times 17 with a 59 modifier. B, 17311, 17312, 17313 with a 59 modifier, 17314 with a 59 modifier, 17315 times 10 with a 59 modifier, and 88305 with a 59 modifier. C, 17313, 17314, 17311 with a 59 modifier, 17312 with a 59 modifier, 17315 with a 59 modifier, 88035 times 2 and D 17311 17312 17313 with a 59 modifier 17314 with a 59 modifier and 17315 with a 59 modifier a 65 year old retired accountant arrives to the dermatologist for removal of squamous cell carcinoma of the left cheek and that's 5 square centimeters and upper back four square centimeters. The cheek required five stages. The first stage was cut into two blocks and the second had 10 blocks and the third had five blocks. The fourth had seven blocks and the fifth had no blocks. The upper back lesion required two stages. Both had 10 blocks each. The physician performed the pathology of the tissue from the from the um, back, verifying the cancer had been eradicated from both sites. Excuse me, from the cheek and back, verifying the cancer had been eradicated from both sites. Which procedure codes best describe this encounter? Mrs. Tracy, can you please correct that check into cheek? And you know what, coders? Go ahead and solve this scenario. I'm going to give you two minutes. And if you can eliminate some things on site, go right ahead. All right.
Okay, coders. I think I gave you more time. Mrs. Tracy, am I giving them enough time? Um, I think that was a good amount of time, Mrs. J. Um, okay. Especially right. if you know how to code most, but. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I didn't actually give them all of the guidelines, so we're going to do it now. Thank you so much, Mrs. Tracy. All right, so here we go. I'm going to kind of give you the guidelines as we go. I really, really wanted you to just, hey, kind of get one thing at a time, but the answer is A. And one of the things that I did stress was the pathology. The doctor is the surgeon and the pathologist. And on site, do you see some codes that have some possible pathology codes in there? Hmm, all right, let's get started and let's do what we're supposed to do. We have to highlight our keywords, 65-year-old removal, squamous, squamous cell carcinoma of the left cheek. The cheek required five stages. So if it was five stages, that means five separate slices. The first stage was cut into two blocks. The second was cut into 10 blocks. The third had five blocks. The fourth had seven blocks. And the fifth had no blocks. All right, so five stages on that cheek. And now we're going to turn our attention to the upper back. The upper back required two stages or two slices. And both of those stages had 10 blocks each. That means they cut it up. All right. And the physician performed the pathology of the tissue from the check and from the cheek and, and back verifying the cancer had been eradicated from both sites. All right. So the doctor worked as the pathologist and the surgeon. So B is eliminated because we know I'm going to go back. 88305, that's a pathology code. How do you know, Mrs. J? Well, I know that the 80,000 series is the pathology section. Got to go. And 88035 times 2, that is the surgical pathology code. And that, too, has to go. And that leaves us with A and D. Now, coders, if you are taking your exams, your coding exams, how much of an advantage would that give you? It would give you a whole lot. And that is because we know the guideline. All right, so let's go ahead and inventory what's happening. We know the cheek has five stages or five slices. The first stage has two blocks. The second has 10 blocks. The third was cut up into five blocks. The fourth was cut up into seven. And the fifth stage was cut up into no blocks. And what I didn't tell you, well, I mean, let's review the back and then I, there's something else I want to tell you. So the back has two stages. The first slice or the first stage had 10 blocks. It was cut up into 10 pieces. The second slice or the second split stage was cut up into 10 blocks. Now, the way we code these is we code the stages, then we code the blocks. We code the stages and we code the blocks. And the stages, particularly the first stage, has its own code. And then the remaining stages or slices can all be coded together. Well, not necessarily they're coded separately, but using the same code. All right, so if there are only two parent codes in the um, Mo's section. So that makes it easy. It's coded according to the body area. So if we look at code 17311, this is the code for the Mo's technique of the head, neck, hands, feet, genitalia, or any location with surgery directly involving muscle, cartilage, bone, tendon, major nerves, or vessels. And this code is only for the first stage up and up to five blocks. So we can code stage one and up to five blocks. So we know stage one will be coded with 17311. Now 
the add-on code 17312. This, this is the add-on code for each additional stage after that first one. You know that first one is coded by itself. All additional stages use that same add-on code and all this add-on code includes five blocks each. All right, so only five blocks. So if we're looking up here, we know stage one is using 17311. Stage two will use 17312 and it'll only cover five of the blocks. Stage three will use 17312 and it'll only cover five of the blocks. We're in good shape. And stage four will use 17312. It's gonna cover five of the blocks. And stage five, we're just going to use 17312. Now, what do we do with the remaining blocks? Well, what you do is add those remaining blocks and use the blocks code. Now, let's just stay on the task of coding the stages, making sure we code the correct stages in the bundled blocks first. All right, so we know 17311 is the first stage, and both A and D are coding for that one stage. But if you're looking at D, it's coding only for one additional stage, just one. We've got four additional stages. So on site, we know the D is wrong, okay? So let's turn our attention to the back and the blocks. Now let's just go ahead and account for the additional blocks that we need to code for. Stage two has five blocks in excess. Stage four has two blocks in excess. That's a total of seven blocks. Okay, so let's look at our, let's look what we're coding for. Let's look at A, 17311 and 17312 times four. That says that we have five slices here. And remember that initial one is always coded separately. The initial one in the body of the body area is coded separately. So the initial one in each body area is coded separately. Now let's go ahead and let's do our due diligence and let's look at the back. And if you go to 17313, this is the code for Mohs micrographic technique for the trunk, arms, legs, first stage up to five tissue blocks, all right? So 17313 is the code for the first stage of the back. And then 17314, well, that is going to be the second stage. And all Mohs micrographic codes, all stage codes have five blocks bundled, okay? And if you look in this pink box right here, stage one has 10 blocks. So five of them are bundled and five are extra. Stage two have 10 blocks. Five are coded and five are extra. So if we add all of these blocks up, then we'll know how many blocks to code for. And the blocks code is 17315. This is the Mohs blocks code. It is an add-on code. And you use this code for each additional block after those five tissue, um, five bundled block tissues. All right, so we're gonna add up all the excess blocks over five. So you've got five plus two is seven plus five plus five is 17. So look at our code, 17315, this is your blocks code, times 17. And make sure you pay attention to these modifiers. These modifiers say, hey, you can code me. All right, we are distinctly different lesions. Uh-oh. And if you coders said A, 
outstanding. Now, again, I want to tell you that this is an advanced instruction on Mose. This is, we've assumed that you've coded this before or have seen this before. If you've never seen or coded a Mose micrographic procedure, you will need to receive the full instruction where we break down everything very, very basic so that you can understand it. Um, I would recommend that you go to your course. If your course hasn't reached that yet, then you will need to make sure that it's addressed. If you um, have completed a course and have never seen this, then I have to tell you, this is something that you may encounter on your exam. And for those of you that have taken the CPC exam, the, the, um, the uh, CPC or CCSP exams, and maybe you can shed some light in the chat and let your um, your colleagues know whether or not you've seen this on an exam or this is something they may encounter. My my um, wisdom, <laughs> no, not wisdom. I think that is the worst word because I don't know what's on that exam, but I know one thing, I am an AAPC. Um, approved instructor. I have the AAPC curriculum. So the AAPC tells me, hey, you need to teach the students this. So this is what they're saying that you need to know. And if you don't know it, and if it wasn't taught to you, then you need to, to find, you know, you need to take that, get that instruction. Either you can go ahead, go back into CPT, read over those guidelines forensically, make a list of the guidelines and what you need to know to code these, or you can buy the TTT manual, which does it for you, or you can um, register for our lecture series. Lecture series is very inexpensive, and I think there is a coupon code in your discussion Right in that discussion box, there's a coupon code for 10% off. It's already inexpensive. I would just enroll for one month, get those guidelines, study intently, and get what you need. And I, I promise that the instruction will be simple. All right, so I was long-winded. Mrs. Tracy, is this a four-hour? <laughs> That was such a great discussion on Mose. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Mrs. J. Very, very detailed, very thorough. You're amazing, Mrs. J. And guess what, Mrs. J? We are to our last discussion. Woohoo, everybody. Woo <laughs> Celebration. <laughs> okay. So um, sometimes I think we might forget that breasts are also coded from the integ section. So we did want to spend a little bit of time here just talking real quick about these breast excisions, okay? So um, just remember um, here for the breast, many of the biopsies are bundled. Um, lump, lumpectomies are partial. Oops, did I have my, <laughs> I think I, you still have the screen, Mrs. J, I so do. give me one second. <laughs> Sorry about that, I thought I, I took it. All right, here we go. Okay, so um, lumpectomies are partial mastectomies and excisions include removal of cyst, tumors, and lesions. So let's look at some guidelines. Okay. One second, clear everything off my screen. Okay, so um, excisional breast surgery includes certain biopsy procedures, the removal of cysts or other benign or malignant tumors or lesions, and the surgical treatment of breast and chest wall malignancies. Biopsy procedures may be percutaneous or open, and they um, involve the removal of different amounts of tissue for diagnosis, okay? So just again, this is bundled. Your excisional breast surgery includes certain biopsy procedures. So some of those biopsy procedures are bundled, okay? Um, when an open incisional biopsy is performed after image guidance placement of a localization device, so those, um, sometimes you'll see the, the clips or those um, metallic pellets, different things that are placed in um, the breast, um, just um, pay attention to that, 19101 is reported, okay? And the appropriate image guidance localization device placement code is reported, okay? Um, one thing to remember, um, this coding tip right here, I like this coding tip. Um, for the same breast lesion, we do not report codes 19081 to 19086 in conjunction with codes 19280 to 192. 
or 76098-76942-77002 and 77021. That's basically the placement. If you read those codes, if you read the language, you'll see that um, 19081 to 19086 actually will include the placement of the localization device. So of course you wouldn't code it separately because it's included in the language. And then some of those co those codes actually will include the imaging guidance too, which you wouldn't if you notice these um, 70,000 series codes, those are your radiology for the guidance. So you wouldn't report those separately, okay, if it's included already in your code language. So just watch out for that. Um, and um, when open in excision of breast lesions, um, such as lesion of breast, uh, ducts, cysts, benign or malignant tumors is performed, the adequacy of the surgical margins is not specifically considered and may include preoperative placement of those radiological markers, such as the guide wire and the clip, okay? And um, partial mastectomy procedures, um, examples of those are lumpectomy, tylectomy, quadratectomy, or segmentectomy. Um, they describe open excisions of breast tissue with specific attention to adequate surgical margins. So just, um, just pay attention to that down there. Those are actually some keywords, okay? That will help you to determine what you're dealing with. Because in a scenario, you might just see, um, you might see the word quadratectomy. And so it's, it's really important to know that that is a partial mastectomy procedure, okay? So just pay attention to those keywords and, um, I think that is that is it. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, actually, I do want to. Oh, sorry, let me go back. I do want to draw your attention over here to another um, guideline that I didn't um, didn't point out or that I didn't um, mark here. But um, just the image guided placement of local localization devices without image guided biopsy are reported with 19281 to 19288. Um, and this is what I want you to know. When more than one biopsy or localization device placement is performed using the same imaging modality, use an add-on code whether that additional surface is on the same or the contralateral breast. So it's telling you there to use the add-on code, okay? Um, rather, whether it's on the same or the contralateral, which would be the opposite breast, okay? All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and move on because I have a scenario for you to end our day. And I will go ahead and read this. We have A19081, B19083, C19083, 19084, D19285, 19083, modifier 59-19084. A 60-year-old female with bilateral stage three breast cancer arrives to the surgery center for bilateral breast biopsies and localization device placement prior to her scheduled mastectomy. The patient was prepped and draped in sterile fashion. Anesthesia was administered and biopsies were taken from both breast and under, under ultrasound guidance, metallic pellets were placed in each breast as localization devices for the upcoming removal surgery. What Procedure codes best describe, code or codes best describe this encounter. And I will give you a minute and a half and your time begins now.
Okay, okay, get your answers in and let's go ahead and walk through this one together. And looking at my answers, I noticed A and B has a one code and C and D have um, a few different, well, C has two and D has three, but B and C share the same first listed code. So that's all I pretty much observed from that. So let's go ahead and look at this. Our answer is going to be C, okay? Let's find out why. We have our keyword 60 year old bilateral breast biopsies, localization device placement prior, um, and then we have biopsies on both breasts under ultrasound guidance, metallic, metallic pellets placed each breast. Okay, so if we look at 19081, this is for a biopsy of the breast with um, that placement of that um, localization device. However, pay attention to your guidance. Um, our scenario says that this was under ultrasound guidance. Um, 19081 is coding for stereotactic guidance, okay? So wrong guidance, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of answer A, okay? Um, the next one we're gonna look at is 19083, and I see that in B and, D, or B and C there. So that is also for a biopsy of breast, and that is definitely with the place or with um with the placement of the breast localization device, also with ultrasound guidance. That's the guidance we're looking for there. So I like that code. Um, however, it says that the biopsies were taken from both breasts. So I will reference you to a guideline we just spoke about um in the uh, previous slide. Um, but look at this 19084, this is coding, this is the add-on code for each additional lesion, including ultrasound guidance. Um, so we are going to need that code. Um, so we're gonna get rid of 19083 because we're gonna code 19083 for that first biopsy on the one breast and then on the other breast, we're coding the add-on code. Because remember in the guideline it stated that, and I, like I said, I'm gonna pull that up in just a minute again so you guys can um, see, see it. All right, so um, the last thing I want to do is look at D because I noticed that D has that code 19285. Remember, I talked about also about um, paying attention to not coding um, certain codes from this section with other codes, um, depending on what, what the code description is telling you. So 19285 is incorrect because this is for the, bla the placement. Sorry. <laughs> this. This is for the placement of the breast localization device. Um, and that is included in your code description. So we wouldn't code that separately, okay? Since it's included here in that 19083, we don't code it separately. Therefore, we can go ahead and eliminate 19285. And C is going to be the correct answer. And going back to that guideline, it says when more than one biopsy or localization device placement is performed using the same imaging modality, you use an add-on code. So see, in this case, we use that add-on code 19084. Um, uh, whether, uh, whether the additional service is on the same or the contralateral breast, okay? So in this case, it was on um, the opposite breast, and it's telling us per our guideline that we're just, we're gonna use an add-on code, okay, for that. So um, hence why we use 19084, and um, I believe that's it. What do you think, Mrs. J? I think they, you know what? If they don't think so, I don't know. You all got a comprehensive instruction on guidelines for the integumentary section. Mrs. Tracy, you did an amazing job. Thank you so much for being, she keeps me grounded. Yes, she does. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you so much for being that, the best ever. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, and, we couldn't do this without you. Oh no, you know what I'd like to do though? I'd like to give them some instructions on what to do now I'm going to um, show my screen in just a moment. All right, so just to let you know the following, well, of course, you know, we use the CPT manuals. I don't believe there's any AAPC content in this particular um, instruction. Oh, there may be one, one scenario, but for the most part, um, they're all, you know, um, AMCI and um, those were our scenarios. And also the CPT principles of coding, that is another source that we used. And inside that manual, they have some additional um, 
resources to help you strengthen your skill, your coding skill. And one of the things I like to do every class, I like to give you something that will help you, you know, test your coding. But it doesn't necessarily have to be coding. It could be medical terminology. It could be anything. And I took this this um, exercise from the CPT, the principles of CPT. This is a matching deaf um, assignment and um, these are procedures. So see how well that you know it. So if I were you, I would take a screenshot if you can or just watch the playback. But I'm going to show you the answers on the next slide. So if you want to turn your head, you can, but here are the answers. There they are. If you want to, if you're watching this in playback on YouTube, go ahead and pause that screen so that you can check your answers. And next, here are some additional resources, some internet-based internet exercises that CPT um, recommends for your um, further development of coding integumentary. So if you want to go ahead and screenshot it or you just pause the screen, there you go. And finally, homework. If you came today, you can look in that chat, in that, dis in the chat, I don't think it's called the chat, but the discussion, the discussion, the YouTube, dis is, what is it called, Mrs. Tracy? Is it called the discussion? Do you know what it's called? And if you, I wanna tell you the formal term, the actual, term that YouTube uses so you're not looking everywhere. It's definitely not the chat. Yeah, I'm so used to saying chat because of the classroom. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I would probably refer to it as, but just your where you can communicate with us, where you comment, maybe comments. <laughs> yeah, that might be, okay, I'm, it's coming up, it's coming up, I can see it now. See, it's so difficult to see it when you're you're live. All right, so right in the comment section, she is absolutely right. No, not the comment section, right where it says, right where you see our logo, in that section there, just click on it, it'll, it'll say show more, click on that. And when you click on that, you'll be able to see your homework link. You'll be able to, um, basically the homework, the purpose of the homework is to reinforce what you've learned during this class. It's testing your guideline strength. Not everything that we've discussed, but nine times out of 10, you will see most of it. Um, your homework is auto graded, so you don't have to turn it in and come next week, 12 p.m. Eastern. Now, this link will remain in this, this section right above the comments. Mrs. Tracy, that's it. Above the comments, it will remain there for 24 hours. After that, it goes away, All right? So you're gonna have to register each week for your homework and for your practice. And if you miss it, it's okay, um, you know, just make sure that you make it next time. And remember, do not share these links because they are um, specific. So we're asking you not to share the link. All right. So I just want to say thank you, everybody. I want to tell you that you all were amazing. And it was my pleasure to be here today. Mrs. Tracy, would you like to say so long? Hey, and you know what? I want to shout out our instructors. Don't you, Ms. Rochelle? Yes, definitely. All of our ANCI instructors do an amazing job. And I'm sure along the way, you guys will um, have some interaction with all of them. But yeah, Ms. Rochelle definitely um, helps us keep us on Ms. our toes over here. Ms. Tasha. Ms. Amber. Ms. Oh, let's see, who else is in? Ms. Oh, goodness. I don't know. I can't see. But anyway. I just want to say thank you so much, Mrs. Tracy. Thank you, coders. And we'll see you next week. And we will be discussing musculoskeletal section. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, y'all. You did a great job. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Mrs. J, for a great class. Thank you, Mrs. Tracy. Take care now.